What places stir us? What sights stun us? What moments move us? It's why we watch and who we tell, and what we might hope to come true. A miracle at its core is a violation of the rules of experience and the laws of nature. If faith is belief in things unseen, sport is the marvel of what we can see. So we watch, not for the fact of what happens, but for the magic of what might. We watch for the urgency of now and the prayer of what's next. Turning on the burners, spins it. There he goes. Are you kidding? He's gone the distance. We watch for the wishing more than the knowing and the belief beyond the proof. And he will score. Just listen. Listen to the noise. weather on this historic day. The Rose Bowl bathed in sunshine sitting at the foot of the San Gabriel Mountains as we welcome you to the college football playoff at the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual. We like the sound of that. The 101st Rose Bowl but unlike any other. Semifinal number one of course the Oregon Ducks the second seeded team. Florida State is the second ranked team just behind Alabama in the AP poll which will face Ohio State at the All-State Sugar Bowl directly following this game about 8.30 Eastern time. The winners to collide at at t Stadium on January 12th. Welcome back Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet. Well, these four playoff teams were four of the preseason top five, Kirk. The Seminoles and the Ducks both expected to be here, but both have had very compelling journeys. The Seminoles haven't been dominant. They've been amazing, in Jimbo Fisher's words, falling behind with mistakes again and again, showing incredible survival instinct. It's been amazing to watch this team just week after week be challenged. And I think a lot of the cynics and a lot of the outsiders thought, okay, maybe this is the week they go down. But with number five back there and with a defense in the second half that's made a lot of plays, they have built a will that they believe that they're going to win. Here they come into this game, big underdogs. They are not saying it necessarily publicly, but they're feeding off of that. I will be surprised, even though it's been a trend for them to start slow. I'll be very, very surprised in this on this setting if they start slow. I think Jameis and this defense will play much better than they have all year. Knowles underdogs for the first time since 2011. It's because Oregon has been on a roll. Since their one loss to Arizona, they began to regroup. And it began on this field against UCLA, Kirk. 26-point-per-game margin in that eight-game winning streak, despite injury after injury. Well, a lot of injuries, a lot of unknowns as we came into this season. But the one thing we knew about was Marcus Mariota, and he's lived up to the billing and the pressure. This will be his 40th start in this offense. He started with Chip Kelly the last couple of years, of course, with Mark Helfrich. And I think the offense, much like what you see from Florida State feeding off of Jay Jameis Winston, they feed off of his leadership in a different way and his playmaking ability. It'll have to be very, very, at a very high level today for them to move the ball consistently against a very talented Knowles defense. Talked about the two experienced quarterbacks, but there are two true freshman running backs, one on either side, who become the workhorses for their team. You think they're huge today? I, I really do. As much as we're going to talk about the quarterbacks, I do think it starts with the true freshman running backs. Cam Irving, the starting left tackle, moves to the middle. You see the two high safety look? That's where the freshman's going to be in have to be able to run the football into that kind of look. The reason that's important, that gets the safeties down. Now they crowd the line of scrimmage, and now Rashad Green gets some one-on-one -on -one opportunities where he can make plays. Now, this is the thing we don't know about yet. We'll have to stay, again, close to this injury to Nick O'Leary. If he gets down in the red zone, Jameis Winston will always look his way and high point the football 
to the big tight end to be able to let him go up and use his size to be able to make plays. But with all the talk about Winston, if you really have watched Florida State, it starts with the line of scrimmage and Dalvin Cook and Carlos Williams running the ball to set up Jameis Winston. Williams and Mario Pender, another back also healthy. Mm -hmm. So was Thomas Tyner for Oregon to help out Royce Freeman, who's just had a spectacular freshman year. One of the most impressive true freshman running backs I've ever seen in covering this sport for a long time. And he has really come on the second half. I, I look at Mariota in this option game as the counterpunch to the inside run game. Chip Kelly, Mark Helford, Scott Frost will tell you that the inside run game sets up this offense. Once they get the inside run game going, that's where you'll see the perimeter part of this offense. It, they stretch you horizontally with the, the jet sweeps, the quick throws, and this is the biggest part of the game to me today. Can Florida State avoid this? You get caught up in the run game, you get caught up in that outside run game, and then boom, there's somebody busts an assignment and it's a big touchdown pass. Mariota has to make Florida State pay for being out of position by throwing touchdowns. Down passes. Dalvin Cook from Miami began the year as a non-factor, became Fisher's trump card, and now is the workhorse. Royce Freeman, who comes from extreme Southern California, about 20 miles north of the Mexican border, the first duck true freshman 1,000-yard rusher. We haven't talked defense yet, Kirk. Which defense is going to step up and look better than they have all year against tough opposition? Because they both had their moments, but they've also been vulnerable. Yeah, they have. And I think the two defenses come in with a different mentality. I think Oregon's going to come in defensively, and they're going to almost build an umbrella. Because of Ifo Ekpreolamu being out, they're not going to play a lot of man-to-man. -man. They're not going to live on an island with their corners against Jameis Winston. They're going to keep everything in front of them. Challenge Florida State to see if they can move the ball without making mistakes and then try to lock down the Knowles offense in the red zone. Try to make the Knowles kick field goals. That'll be Oregon's approach. And I think if you're looking at Florida State, it's dealing with the tempo. It's dealing with the personnel groupings, the formations, the motions, all the eye candy that happens before the snap. That's what really can stress you. And also, let's keep a close eye on the defensive lineman from Florida State. We've seen this offense wear down talented defensive linemen in the past. The Knowles have got to be weary of that and try to substitute the big fellas as often as they can throughout the game. Spending time with both teams. You've got two supremely confident bunches. No program in America has a better record this decade than Oregon. Still, though, many don't respect them. And on the Seminole side, they feel like the whole world, besides their community, wants to see them lose. And they seem to be embracing that wholeheartedly. Yeah, well, and, and I think we've felt that this week. You know, they've tried to downplay that. I think that it's real. I think they feel it. I think their fans feel it. That's why I'd be, I'd be very surprised if they started slow the way they have so many times this year. Well, so many times Florida State's been able to pull out close games. The Ducks have not played in that many close games. Well, the Rose Bowl game is about to begin to usher in this new playoff era in college football. Semifinal, number one and for the national anthem. We throw it down to the field. The Oregon Marching Band, under the direction of Dr. Eric Wilshire, Director of Athletic Bands.
If you're not ready for the Rose Bowl in the playoffs, you might not have a pulse. Kickoff from the free game rush, closing in on kickoff between Oregon and Florida State. Ducks in familiar territory. They played here 20 times in the past. A familiar scene because they came here and beat the UCLA Bruins following their only losses here and began to rebuild their season on this very field. Lots of green and gold, folks making the 859-mile journey south. They always make a fashion statement. This is the debut of the all-apple green unis and the matte green helmets. Jake Fisher, one of the key components of that offensive line, has the higher seed. Oregon is the home team. As we mentioned, the travel south, the familiar territory. The Florida State Seminoles back where they, of course, won the final BCS title a year ago. They've not yet played in an official Rose Bowl game, however. Seven games decided by a touchdown or less. An instinct for survival. And a habit of being just a little bit late, as they are today, Kirk. streak that stretches back 29 games to late 2012. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Seminoles won't mind the fact that this is an Oregon crowd. They felt like folks here against them all year. The honorary captains for today's game Great Dan Founts of Oregon, Jamie Dukes representing Florida State, and it's Matt Austin of the SEC to toss the coin. Gentlemen, congratulations on being selected to play in the first ever college football playoff semifinal game. Joining us today for the coin toss and presenting the coin is the president of the Tournament of Roses, Mr. Rich Chinner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, today's coin is a commemorative coin. Each side is represented by one of the teams. We have Oregon and Florida State. There'll be no need to call the toss. While well, flip it, whatever head is showing, that'll one that have won the toss. And it is Florida State. Florida has won the toss. You have the first selection. You want to defer your choice of the second half? They'll defer their choice in the second half. You want the football? Which way you want to kick it? Okay, Florida State over there, Oregon over here. So the Seminoles win the toss and defer. Mark Helfrich and his offense will get the football first. The 40-year-old Oregon native, who's 23-3 and three in two seasons, is with Tom Rinaldi. Chris, thank you very much. Coach, what most tells you your team is ready? We're, we're just our mindset's good you know we're loose we're a loose operation in general and, and we're focused uh confident and ready to go appreciate the time and best of luck to you all right let's go over to heather with jimbo fisher tom thanks so much coach we saw what nobody wants to see your tight end nick o'leary went down running around tweaked his hamstring what's his status for the game he's fine he felt he get tight and he's caught it beforehand we went in and got it stretched out so he's good to go Today you return to the field a year after winning the national championship right here. How do you use that experience to your advantage? Well, hopefully the atmosphere and environment learn how to play big games and not worry about the outcome, just go play the game. And these guys have been in a lot of big games, so hopefully we'll carry it on to the day. Coach, enjoy it. Thank you. Chris? Heather, Fisher's won 58 out of 68 career games and has not lost a postseason game, 4-0 in bowls. So one of the great kickers we've seen in college football, Roberto Aguayo to kick it away and begin the playoff era, the highest level of college football and this Rose Bowl game is by Northwestern Mutual. Oregon can boast some dangerous return men. Mary 
Mariota awaits his opportunity just seconds away now. Devin Allen and Byron Marshall deep to receive Aguayo's kick. Bring it out. This is Allen. The sprinter. Still loose. Can't spin free. Dropped at the 20. And that's where the Heisman Trophy winner, the proud Hawaiian, will begin, Kurt. Well, there, there's always pressure. And when you win a Heisman Trophy, there's even more pressure when you come into a game like this. Not only because of how you feel. There's Devin Allen walking off a little gingerly. One of the top receivers. We'll have to keep a close eye on that be a significant loss. That's the 110-meter NCAA hurdles champion, yeah. the fastest guy in this offense. Yeah. But Mariota understands, he, he, if there's one guy that can handle that pressure after winning the Heisman in, in early December, it, it's him. Let's see how the Knowles deal with the tempo. It's Charles Nelson coming in motion. Freeman is the tailback. They fake it and throw it on the edge, but penetrating, flying up to stop Marshall. The Knowles ready for that first play. Tyler Hunter on the stop. Tyler Hunter, but P.J. Williams, these corners will be tested quite a bit on the perimeter with a lot of quick passes, and it's not just tackling in space, it's getting off the blocks, and P.J. Williams there does an outstanding job. Mariota plants and flips it short. This is Freeman, can't work free. Reggie Northrup, the junior linebacker, stopped it. It'll be third long. This Florida State defense right now dialed in with three weeks to prepare. Just has a real good feel for this Oregon offense here early. Just the first couple snaps. They blitzed him that time with a linebacker, and the other linebacker, Northrup, stayed in place there on the screen. Well, we'll show pressure on third and eight. Mariota has time, looks it over the middle, but overthrows his receiver, looking for Evan Bayless. The tight end who's filling in for Farrell Brown, the starter who's injured. Interesting formation from Florida State there on third down. Only three down linemen, but they brought a, a linebacker blitz with Reggie Northrup, but also had Chris Casher, an outside linebacker, walked off the ball and blitzed him late as well. But Oregon picked it up. That time, Marcus just missed his open receiver. The shot Reed back deep to receive the punt. Ian Wheeler, that's going three and out. Making the fair catch at the 41-yard line. So a strong start for the Florida State defense. And now Jameis Winston, excellent field position to work with. Yeah, and remember, we always want to see how the Knowles start. Their defense of three and out against Mariota. And now here comes Jameis Winston. Last year's Heisman Trophy winner has had a tendency to be a little sluggish early in games. He knows that he has to start fast. Ipo at Crayola, not in the lineup. See how quickly they try to attack the perimeter of the Oregon defense. O'Leary is in the lineup. The tight end lining up on the left of the formation. That's good news for the Seminoles so far. Dalvin Cook lined up behind Winston. Jameis flips it in the flat to the freshman. Ducks close down quickly. Here's the Chick-fil-A impact players. We'll start with Florida State. And you got to start with that running game. We talked about Dalvin Cook, how important he will be in the way Oregon will try to defend Florida State. They want to get him going to create some one-on-one -on -one opportunities without Ekpre Olamu in the lineup. And that's where Rashad Green, one of the top receivers in the country this year, will try to get the one-on-one -on -one matchups. Carlos Williams flanking Cook. It's the young guy with the ball running right, has a crease. And has a first down, or nearly a first down, at the 50, a mark of a yard short. And a really good block by Carlos Williams, number nine. Just follow him. He usually is a runner. And here they put both their starting running backs in the lineup together, and he follows Carlos Williams and puts up a nice block out on the perimeter and gives Dalvin Cook some room to set up a very third, a very short uh, yardage situation here on third down. The feeling is the Ducks don't see a lot of two back in the No, not at all. It's Freddie Stevenson in front of Williams. Williams has a first down into Oregon territory. Cuts it back, dragged down inside the 30. So the Knowles running game is rolling. 
Nick O'Leary picks up a great block. He's in motion here, and he is going to be able to get this block on the outside linebacker, Tyson Coleman, and that's what freed it up. Actually, it's a safety, Eric Dargan. He just submarines him right there to win the edge, and it frees up Williams to pick up huge yards along with another block by a receiver downfield. The nose on the attack here early. Remember we talked about they've been sluggish right now. They're kind of, they're kind of going with the tempo and, a, and a kind of a, a, a feel of confidence to this offense. Not a clean handoff in Williams' pocket immediately. In the middle of that Ducks defense rising up. That's DeForest Buckner, their best defensive lineman. Cam Irving makes the move in the Miami game late in the year from left tackle to center. And I, I, I and watching him, and you and I had a lot of their games, I just was amazed where you saw very few snaps that were concerned between he and Jameis Winston. That time, Jameis, for whatever reason, could not get the ball cleanly and it affected the execution of the play. Calvin Cook back in. Winston fakes it to him. Rolls. A stiff arm to gain some space and scoots out after a very short gain. It'll be third and long. Talk about the dramatic improvement of the offensive line the last four games. And Irving went to the center. See, 42nd career start, but he's only started a handful of games at center. And Roderick Johnson, a true freshman at 6'7", 330 out of Missouri, moved into left tackle. I talked to Coach Trickett, the line coach, on the field before the game. He kind of winked at me. He said that, that move of Ant Irving into the middle really helped out. It sure has, but we got a big third down here. They need seven. They clock winding down. Bucks rush four. Winston pressured, backpedaling. And now we'll just heave it down out of bounds. So Oregon only rushes four, but takes away time for Winston. A great job with coverage by only rushing four and sitting back in zone. Jameis Winston didn't have anybody to get the football to. You'll see these linebackers drop back. They sit back, take away the underneath routes. The other linebacker in safety is taking away the deeper routes. And eventually, Jameis Winston just has to throw that football away. Interesting style here on third down against Winston. Instead of blitzing him, rushing four, sitting back in zone. Berto Aguayo. 46 of 49 in his career from 43 yards it is almost automatic and a flag comes in with the line of scrimmage SEC crew Matt Austin is our referee Talking to Florida State, it would not be a first down, a five-yard penalty. So Fisher may elect to just leave the three points on the board. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 86. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. But it's not a five-yarder. It's a crucial 15-yarder, moving the ball closer. And Winston will have another chance to improve on that field goal to take it off the board. Yeah, and these are the mistakes you just cannot afford to have, especially on a play like special teams. How about the officials there? They caught French right in with his right hand up into the face mask and just pushed him back. I think French on one side, and he got Prevo on the other. There's the left forearm that went through, and that's the one that they called, but both of them using the same technique, and they caught Prevo on the left side. But the ball moved inside the 15, first down. Option look. Winston on the keeper. Spins for a yard. And they see for more design runs for the quarterback today. Yeah, he, he tweaks his ankle about the sixth game in. And, and since then, is has been about 70 or 80 percent along the way. I thought in the ACC championship game against Georgia Tech, he was closer to 100 percent. But with the three weeks to get ready for this game and watching him, you and I, in practice, it's clear option could be a part of the game. Scrambling, creating could be a part of the plan for, for Winston now that he's healthy. Ducks doing a good job of gap control here once they get inside the red zone. They need to force field goals. Winston straight back. Hit, loses the ball. The scrum. And the Knowles retained possession. 
That was to Rodney Prevo Kirk, who just got penalized for the hands to the face, pressuring Jameis. Yeah, he did a good job. They, they walked him out over a slot receiver, and then they brought him. They brought him late. Nobody picked him up. Jameis Winston, because of his vision downfield, he didn't sense him at all. And Prevo walked out. This is an outside linebacker with the body of a safety, but he was walked out over a slot receiver, and they brought him late, surprised the Knowles up front and Jameis Winston. Bobby Hart, the tackle, making that crucial recovery, but it's third and 17. A screen. Williams, wide open, knocked down at the 11-yard line. Well, that, that, that's the goal here for Oregon. They're going to give up some yards. They want to try to get Aguayo to have to come out to kick field goals. It's the second time now they've held up on a third down, and it's the same blitz. They brought Prevo again from the field. They dropped their nose guard, trying to get Jameis Winston maybe fooled to throw the ball into the arms of Balducci. But Oregon, give them credit. That's the goal throughout four quarters. Give up some yards, force field goals, and not allow the touchdowns. Now, do you think that red zone defense is the deciding factor in this sure game? Sure do. So Aguayo, who made it from 43, taken off the board. This from an angle in 28. No problem again. Oregon does well to prevent a touchdown after that personal foul, and now it swings back to Marcus Mariota, the current Heisman winner, and his second possession for Oregon coming up. It's an easy nickname, Kirk, for fans like you of that, that classic <laughs> 80s video game, Super Mario Brothers. Or, I think there were eight worlds in that game, right, for number eight? Yeah, it took me about a month. I think I conquered all eight. I love that game. But you're not bragging. No, I, I, you know, I spent a lot of time on that in eighth grade. <laughs> Super Mariota is going to collect a lot of coins whenever That's he really cool. moved to the next level. Aguayo to kick it off, and a concern for Oregon. We'll get the update from Tom Rinaldi momentarily. Devin Allen took the opening kickoff back, but limped off. Is not out there at the moment. Field goals land in play so they can cover it, but that's shorter than he expected. And Byron Marshall trying to spin free. He stops at the 27. Tom? Well, return man and receiver Devin Allen hurt on the opening kickoff of this game. Came off clutching his right knee, Chris. He went straight to the training table, attended to by trainers and medical personnel. His return looked to be doubtful. He's just gotten off the table right now. Had it wrapped, had ice on it with players consoling him. We'll have to see if he returns. It'll have to be qualified as doubtful at this point. Freshman from Phoenix, Kirk, will you, you prepare you have a great freshman season? First play in this game. In, in the video there, it looked like the, the cut itself such impact on that cut. Right away, he reached down to his knee. Mariota back on first down. Fires across the middle. It's caught by Bayless. Doing his best to be a weapon, a factor in this game, the way that Farrell Brown was. Yeah, great accuracy, quick decision. That's the strength of Marcus Mariota. Now with the first down, now you see Oregon. They give him a different formation. Trips up to the top. Actually, four receivers up to the top. And they throw it into traffic, and this is Charles Nelson, one of the few Floridians on this Oregon team, the freshman a short game. It's one thing to simulate this tempo. It's another thing to be able to go out there and deal with it. The tight end just sneaks out, gets behind the corner, and there's the accuracy that we love to see from Marcus Mariota. 38 touchdowns, only two interceptions coming into this game in his last 372 attempts. Bayless, only his fifth catch of the season there. This is Freeman. Bottled up to be third and medium. Very early, Kirk, with these third and mediums, I think, are the kinds of plays that can help decide this game. Neither defense is very good at getting off the field in these situations. Well, I think for Oregon to have a chance to successfully and consistently move the ball against this talented defense, they've got to make tempo and the formations and all the pre-snap movement affect this Knowles defense. High snap. Marietta rolls and flips a short pass high, but it's collected for a first down by Charles Nelson. 170-pounder from Daytona Beach. And that's a, there's some traffic there where you got a guy coming in motion. There's a lot of man-to-man. -man. You can see he gets caught up. Four State fans are familiar with picks and screens from the Notre Dame game. That time they saw a receiver, Nelson, get through. Mariota on the keeper. They are keenly aware of his speed. And Ronald Darby, the fast corner, forces him out. And yeah, they are all, every single player on this defense, is determined to not get outflanked by Mariota. And that's why I think running Royce Freeman into the middle, making them respect Royce Freeman, can open that up. 
Marietta forces one over the middle. Clark, first down, inside the 20. Wayne Stanford. Right, number 85 to honor Farrell Brown, and they move to six and want to play fast again. Great patience, went to the backside, found his third option. Mariota keeps it. And gives it off to Nelson there, and Nelson rolling down near the pylon. Marks Mark out at the one. You're going to see a lot of you. Yeah, they can fool you. It's in a hurry. That's after the pitch. He goes in, tries to reach out, comes up. The ball is short. Good spot. And now diving over the pile for a touchdown is Freeman. And the Ducks strike back quickly. Just at the snap, therefore the last play never occurred. The previous play is under further review. They stopped the, from the previous play where Nelson reached to the end zone. The buzzer went down to the umpire. He stopped the play well, before look at the next play would allow him to score the touchdown. This is where he stretches out. Great effort by the true freshman Charles Nelson. It's about the, the ball. The ball hit at about the six-inch line. I think it was a perfect spot. I don't think he broke the plane there at all. And Alfred is saying, wait a second. We knew he wasn't in. Let us have the next yeah, play. We're, we're going tempo here. The review is actually a, a big break for Florida State. The ball will still be very close to the goal line. What an acrobatic move by Nelson. It, it, it was a great play, but I, I think and it's a great look at it here. Where's the ball? The ball goes underneath. Yeah, he's short of the goal line. But the play by Mariota on the play itself, that you saw Florida State's uh, outside linebacker Demarcus Walker come down, which means he, which means uh, Marcus will keep the ball, and then that's that the next step that we see all over college football. Instead of pitching it, it's just a toss to the outside. So you watch, Walker comes down, he takes it. Now instead of running, he just kind of flips it, almost a forward lateral because he's behind the line of scrimmage to get him the football. After review, the ruling of the original play is confirmed. The first and goal, Oregon, on the one foot line. Please reset the game clock to 7-19. 7 9 So take Freeman touchdown dive off the board. It is first and goal. And if you've not seen a lot of Oregon this year, number one, I, shame on you because you, it's a fun <laughs> offense to watch. But that, that's an indication of what Florida State's up against today. It's not just Mariota. It's the tempo. It's, it's the confusion. It's how he can get a defense on its heels to lose their aggressive nature. That was eight plays and 73 yards to get them down there in a minute 49 with a, with a, down to the half-yard line. Yeah, half their touchdown drives this season have been accomplished in less than two minutes. So first and goal, it's Freeman to the right of Mariota. He's got it, and he stopped short of the goal line. Good penetration there. Demarcus Walker getting to submarine the blocker. Bulls have a lot of pride, and they've got a bow up here in the middle. But you, you got a feeling that Mariota's going to get the ball to the edge, give him some options to the outside. Freeman again, muscles in. This one does count, and the Ducks take the lead. Took nine plays to go 73 yards and answer Florida State's field goal. 203. Very time consuming by their standards. And now they'll spread them out and get a look. They go for two quite often if they think it's an advantageous play. And they're going to throw it. This is Taylor Alley. Pitches it out of the Ducks. They have a point. 8 3. Christian French, who's a linebacker, made the catch. Former tight end. They move him out there. They give him the football. And he knows what to do with it with his background of playing tight end. Oh, that shoulder. 
breaks the play to get the two points. Ailey is the number three quarterback. He's won a couple in, and now he's thrown for two two-point conversions. The Ducks on 8-3. Jameis' turn next. The lead. Marietta 4-4. That touchdown drive. He third down conversion to Dwayne Stanford. Big play to the tight end, Bayless, setting up Freeman's touchdown run. Matt Wogan to boot it away. Let's use two pickers. And after mishandling it, Whitfield will bring it out. The 100-yard hero last year. He loses the ball, a scrum down there at the 15. Florida State again recovers one of its own fumbles. For people that aren't familiar with Oregon and the extra point, they will stretch you out like this every time, and then they'll look for matchups. And they see a matchup right here with three of their offensive linemen and only three Florida State defenders. Now you have a guy right here all by himself. So they see the three on three to the outside. They fire the ball to the outside. They say, if you're going to give us a two-pointer, we're going to take it. Throw it to French. Three blockers. Make the blocks. And if Florida State doesn't make an adjustment, they'll see that time and time again. That's the Chip Kelly influence there on the extra point. And a junior linebacker from Iowa <laughs> getting two points in the Rose Bowl. Winston and the Knowles back to work from the 15. Cook. Well strung out by Oregon's defense. Let's take a look, Kirk, at today's plan for success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Now for Oregon, as we've seen, tempo, tempo, tempo. They've got to get Florida State on the heels, which they did on that last drive. Big plays off of play action from Mariota. Florida State starting fast, a big part of uh, something that is hurt them from time to time. They've always had to come back, and they have got to dominate the line of scrimmage to open things up for Dalvin Cook and Carlos Williams. Three up, Jameis Winston. Winston rolls, and then comes back to the right, complete to Rashad Green, but hit immediately and dropped for a loss by Troy Hill. That's a matchup we'll watch this afternoon. And Troy Hill is as excited as anybody on the field. He is replacing Ifo and Crayolamu. How about the quickness there to make the read and go by Kevin Hathaway. Actually, it's Nick O'Leary out there trying to pick up a block. He uses his quickness in space to get around him, reads the play, diagnoses it, and makes the tackle in space. He's a vocal quarter looking forward to the matchup against the Noah's all-time leading receiver. And eager to, to fill in for Ifo Akpreolamu. He's not at the stadium today, watching it on TV. Clock at one, Winston gets the snap off. Fires over the middle, into traffic, incomplete. Was looking for a receiver there, and Hill broke it up. With tight windows, rushing four and, and dropping again seven back into coverage. They're playing zone to keep their eyes on Jameis Winston. Keep those Florida State receivers in front of him. That's a heck of a throw deep in his own territory by Winston. He puts that ball where his receiver actually Lane should have made a play on the football and secured that for a first down. Jameis Winston does his job on that third and long. It's the freshman Urban Lane. He'll get in a hand in there to knock the arm away. And now Jason Beatty in his end zone to punt. Shanked it and out of bounds. And Oregon already up by five will have field position at the plus 40 to begin this drive. You're watching the Rose Bowl game presented by Northwestern Mutual, Oregon up a three. Look back to the last touchdown drive, Mariota, four of four, and it was the first time in this game we've seen what Tempo can do to the Florida State defense. They were on their heels. Marvelous play here by Mariota, getting it out to Nelson. Comes up just a little bit short before Roy Freeman takes it into the end zone. How will Florida State and Charles Kelly adjust to the tempo and the speed in which they just saw Oregon execute on that last drive? After a 27-yard punt, Ducks take over at the 40. They fake it to Freeman, fire it near his side. This is Byron Marshall, last year's leading rusher, converted receiver, who's been very productive. What we're seeing right now is not just tempo, but they're stretching Florida State. They're stretching them horizontally right now with the quick throws, with the sweeps to the outside. And what that does is it opens up vertical throwing lanes and also running lanes. Mariota again fires near his side. And a pitch made by Evan Bayless. Second for the tight end. Short Mariota, game. Mariota is such command of this offense. I mean, we, we see that 
the Eagles run a version of this in the NFL, but when you're starting your 40th game, there's not a whole lot Florida State can show Mariota that he hasn't seen and had to adjust to before. Another play action fake. Mariota fired over the middle, had a man incomplete. Stanford, even at 6-5, couldn't get up to that one. Great job by Mariota, designed to come back to Stanford, but he rolls left. He gets the defense thinking he's about to throw to the flat, which he's been doing, and then comes back to the middle. Mariota scrambling around on third down. Cannot get the edge and is knocked down short. Chris Kasher chased him down, so Mariota shows he's human, had a touchdown there, missed a wide open man. Yeah, heck of a job there by Kasher, not letting Mario get outside of him, but also give an assist to Mario Edwards, who just did a good job of beating his man, and that's what forced Mariota to have to step up and out of the pocket. Looks like for the 25th time this season, Ducks are going to go for it on fourth down. They need five. Marshall comes in motion. Mariota trying to make a late change with four on the play clock. Rolling, rolling, sidesteps a man, flips it back across, and Marshall is knocked down hard. Coming in there was Darby, and the Knowles hold and take over. That's why you can never give up on a play with Mariota. He improvises, he keeps plays alive, he's rolling to his right, and you think that he's going to throw to one of those four receivers, right? Somebody's going to have to be open. Byron, Mar Byron Marshall was one of those receivers. He sensed that his quarterback was in trouble. He immediately went to the other side, see him taking off and going up here, trying to find a little bit of an opening, but give Ronald Darby all the credit there for recognizing the receiver going to the other side and stuck with him and knocked the ball away. Mark Belfort selecting Kirk to pass on a 40-yard field goal attempt. The kickers are pretty reliable from short range, but they really trust Mariota more than the kicking game. That's why they went for it. And, and that and it also fits the personality of being aggressive with your play calling and your approach. This, this program, these players feed off of that kind of attitude from Mark Belfort. So Winston back on first down. A high throw incomplete. Rashad Green was open, but both quarterbacks a little bit keyed up at the moment. This is just the third collision between quarterbacks who've already won Heisman trophies. Matt Leinert, the most recent winner, a route of Oklahoma for USC in the 04 National Championship game. And then Tim Tebow and his Florida Gator teammates rallied to his cause, the defense shutting down Sam Bradford in that championship game. It's amazing what Heisman trophy winners can do to the opponent's defense. This is Cook taking off and muscling out to the 40, a first down for the freshman. What great job on the right side here. Watch these blocks. Good job by the right tackle. Bobby Hart seals that inside. You get some good blocking downfield. But Dalvin Cook is a vital, vital part of this offense and what they want to do. And that big offensive line, they're being challenged by Buckner, Armstead, and Balducci. This is Cook again. This was a running game, Kirk, that after September was ranked outside the top 100 in rushing yards. Winston had to throw a lot of passes in the month of October. They finally, as you mentioned, shifting around those, those linemen have gotten a lot better in the last month. Yeah, I mean, he had 177 against uh, Georgia Tech in the ACC championship game. Had a great game against Florida as well, running with a ton of confidence. Kirk. Has a first down at midfield for Florida State. I, I just continue to go back to what Jimbo Fisher told us just a couple days ago in practice about, hey, we got to be patient. Not just with the scoreboard, but with the style of defense that we're going to face. We've got to not only run the football, we get if Jameis Winston can scramble for some yards, we'll take it scramble. If he needs to check it down to Cook or Williams and hit the underneath routes, we need to do that. We can't get greedy trying to get the ball downfield, especially in the early going of this game. Now the senior... Williams spelling the freshman cook. Winston loops it downfield, has a man open and it's caught. Knocked out of bounds, Travis Rudolph at the Oregon 30. And the true freshman from West Palm Beach has come on huge the second half of the season. He sure has. And, and I, this is an easy read in the flat here. You see him right out here. You're going to read this defender. If he, get, if he sits up, you're going to go over the top. If he drops back, then you're just going to make the easier throw underneath. This time, 
Put an outside linebacker out in space, Christian French. It's tough for him to deal with those receivers out of the perimeter. New York game now the Knowles playing with some tempo. Jesus Wilson on the edge. Another first down inside the Oregon 20. I think Travis Rudolph is the future of the Florida State receivers, the future leader of this team. Made a great catch, comes back the very next play, comes up with a nice block to help spring this running game. Very important for both teams to get great blocking from these wide receivers to be able to try to spring even bigger plays in the run game. And it's Williams on first down. Williams, a sturdy 225-pounder who actually looks bigger than that to me, Kirk. He sure does. Remember, this is, the, this is the game within the game. Oregon said that they knew they'd give up some yards between the 20s, but when Florida State got into the red zone, they changed their mindset. They want to make Florida State and Jameis Winston have to earn touchdowns down here. They'd rather see them settle for field goals. They've already done that once today. Weary is in the game, flexed to the left. They hand it back to Williams, who cuts inside the 10 and should have a first and goal. They have their big unit in there right now. Big offensive lineman, a couple big tight ends. They brought a ton of Freddie Stevenson, the fullback in there as well. Irving at 308 is the smallest of the offensive lineman for Florida <laughs> State. The center. Very good one. So first and goal at the seven. Seminoles have marched 70 yards so far. After stopping the fourth down play. Play clock ticking down. Kimbo Fisher talking to the officials about the, the play clock. Believes it wasn't reset properly. Now we're ready. And it's Cook back in the game. Lined up behind the fullback, Stevenson. And we're Nick O'Leary down in here. If they go play action early, I'd like to try to get him and matched up with a safety. Cook, right up the gut, dives forward to the two. Impressive push by the center and right guard, Irving and Trey Jackson that time. Opening that up, and I'll tell you, Cook was very close to maintaining his balance and taking that into the end zone. In the final minute of the first quarter, Florida State trying to reclaim the lead. Cook cuts it back, knocked down short at the one-yard line. Ducks dive for the football. But it's Florida State ball. Reggie Daniels came in there late. Third down, about a yard away. Ducks very sound there with their caps. Time Daniels, Chris, you talked about it. He looked for the football, but he was also in place, in position, to be able to prevent Cook from getting into the end zone. Cook's have been a very good third and short defense. They don't like that label that they're not tough and not physical. Williams in the eye formation. And Carlos Williams tries to bounce it, but he'll be dropped for a loss on the final play of the quarter. Rodney Hardrick, the smartest of the Duck defenders, says coordinator Don Pella made the play. A flag comes in late. Offside. Defense number 33. Half the distance to the goal. We'll run one on time down. So Tyson Coleman guilty of an offside that takes the tackle for loss away and untimed down about a half yard away. Yeah, and, and nothing to do with it. He's just on the edge there, lined up across the neutral zone, and it's an easy call for the officials. And Oregon's defense steps up just like they want to do. Third down, somebody's got to make a play. And that time you had Hardrick shooting that gap and also Tony Washington setting the edge. But two mental mistakes, penalties by Oregon's defense have prolonged four to six drives. And that field goal attempt, yep. hands in the face and now on that third down. Untimed third down. Williams, no! And the Ducks showing they are a very stout. Short yardage defense. They just clogged up the middle and nowhere for the physical tailback to go. 
What better way to send a message to the country against this Florida State offensive line? We're not tough enough. We can't handle this. How about third and short doing it twice? They just shoot these gaps right here. Safety comes in to help out as well. You know when you see Mario Edwards, the outside linebacker in, they're going to run right. They try to run right, and the Ducks win the battle at the line of scrimmage. Carlos Williams is short. Reggie Daniels helped in the stop. they got a time to think about it. Now do you go for it on fourth and one? And into the first quarter, back after these messages. Up at the Rose Bowl game, presented by Northwestern Mutual. Florida State, the only team in the country that has not converted on a fourth down all season. The fewest attempts of anybody. 0 for 4, Kirk, but they're going here. And the big fella, Mario Edwards, in the lineup. Will they use him as a decoy? They roll up their sleeves and see who's tougher? Or they fake the run and go play action? Edwards lined up behind the tackle. Option look. Winston, keeper, reaches for the goal line, touchdown! And the Seminoles reclaim the lead by a few inches there. They had to work for it. Interesting call by Jimbo Fisher. A look that he has not shown much at all. On fourth and goal, Jameis loses ground, about to pitch, and then decides to cut underneath. Tony Washington grabs a hold of him. And it's really going to come down to his this. knee touch before he breaks the plane. He, looks he, he down. may be down. They'll He's going to be down. Look at this. Previous ruling of a touchdown is under further review. He's going to be down at the half yard line. We talk about tiny margins making huge differences in a game like this. Jameis may know it. Kirk, when you see teams that don't run a lot of option, go to option look plays in big moments. He's always sort of risky. Absolutely. I think him losing ground a little bit earlier, we'll show it again. But you're going to watch the right knee. It's like it touches right about there, short. He's definitely short of the goal line. After review, the runner's knee was down with the ball short of the goal line. Ball to be placed at the one half yard line, first down. Tony Washington was one of the heroes of that defensive stand for Oregon. He's the guy that grabbed Winston's leg. Absolutely. But I go back to when he was under center. Not a lot of experience running this other than practice. I thought he lost ground, and that may have ultimately cost him. Watch out, you're supposed to attack downhill. And instead of attacking downhill, he loses ground, and then instead of pitching, decides to run it. And that's where Tony Washington was about to go out for the pitch. This puts his right foot into the ground, comes back down, and makes that play on Jameis Winston to get him short of the end zone. Still haven't converted in a fourth down this season. Amazing. Mariota backed up in the shotgun now from inside the one-yard line. And it's Thomas Tyner at tailback, and Mariota wants to flip it over the middle, kind of short on it incomplete. Florida State has him backed up. You know, you, Florida State, one thing they're doing a good job of is they're not necessarily blitzing a lot, but they're getting pressure in the face of Marcus Mariota. Tyner hit! No, both comes out. out. He was popped and diving forward to make the astute recovery was Mariota. No, Mariota reads this play, zone read, and Kasher claps his down, and he pulls it out. He comes down on Tyner, and he just pulled that out. That's, that's the, the read option, and it's finest there by Mariota. So it's third and three. He's this one off and muscling forward for a first down is Thomas Tyner, the sophomore from Aloha, Oregon. That is a big conversion here on third down. One of the later pulls in the zone yeah. you'll ever see. It was, it was a great play. And his textbook on what he's reading. When those defensive ends collapse down, he's got to pull it out. And off inside. Tyner loose up to the 25, another first down. E.J. Williams knocked him down, but now the Ducks will speed things up. Same read. This time, Kasher stays outside, and now your man short. Now they run the football up the middle. Tyner, the 
middle again. How important is the interior running game between the tackles for the Ducks today? It's huge. It, it sets up the entire offense. This, this offense is driven by the interior run game. And, and they run so much zone read, and, and it's, it's read option, that when you run the inside run game, it makes the defense start to sink inside, and that opens up the perimeter for things like this. Lanson flips short. Bayless makes the catch and drags a tackler to the 35. It's right near the first down marker. When you can run inside, it opens up Mariota to not just run himself on, this, on the read option, but also it sets up the quick throw to the outside and also, more importantly, the play action for big plays downfield. The third catch for Bayless does move the sticks. Mariota keeper gets the edge, flashes the speed out near midfield, driven out at the 48. See, it, it, the reason you're starting to see the outside open up is we've seen Tyner and also Freeman pick up some yards to the middle. And when you get those yards, the defense just instinctively, you start to squeeze. You start to want to help to the inside. And just when you start to do that, Mariota goes by on the outside. Mariota, as Nelson came in motion, they flip it to him far side, makes a man miss, and gets driven out near the marker hard by Ronald Darby. Well, nine had, more yards. Yeah, nine more yards than the freshman Nelson, who, by the way, is from Daytona Beach, Florida. Ended up all the way out in Eugene, Oregon. But when he gets the ball in space, I don't care who he's going up against, he can make you miss. Empty backfield to Mariota. Keeper up the middle, drives for him for a first down. Nelson blew out his knee as a junior. Really wasn't heavily recruited by the Seminoles of the Gators. Oregon stayed with him despite the injury and it's, it's been a very productive true freshman it's florida state defense right now their heads are spinning a little bit they've prepped for three weeks but to see mariota and this tempo and the personnel groupings and the different formations it's, it puts a lot on this defense mariota by action now tucks it away trying to prolong the play fire sarvine and it's incomplete out of bounds keenan low couldn't come down with it Every Seminole defender talking about how dangerous he is when he extends plays. When he extends plays. I thought he might run this up the middle. Instead, he goes all the way off to the right. Tries to find an open man who adjusted with him. But his feet are in the air. But at the time, low brought that football in. There's the, there's the fatigue of the tempo. Tyner. Muscles forward for about seven. That was Desmond Holland, one of the starters in defensive line, huffing and puffing. Hey, they, 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 and the Florida State coaches tried to downplay this, the significance of this. Hey, we're in great shape. We're ready to go. But And, and you got to rotate bodies in. But take a look at these guys. I mean, this is a big factor facing Oregon. And now they move the six again. Remember, conversion as Tyner moves the chains inside the Seminoles 30, trying to drive from the half yard line all the way to the end zone. This, Tempo is the equalizer for Oregon up front in the trenches. Blanchard, completion far side. This is Keenan Lowe, scamper, excuse me, uh, Harrington scampering forward. Go back to Jameis Winston being short on that fourth down. And if Oregon puts six on the board here, it'll be an interesting sequence of events between Florida State coming up short and Oregon maybe taking it at their home half-yard line and going 99 and a half yards. Tyner motions out. Mariota rolling again. Fires back into the middle. Dangerous throw. Should have been just his third pick of the year, but Jalen Ramsey dropped it. Wow. Uh, when he threw this football, I think he looked up and he saw Jalen Ramsey on, it, on the ground. He had slipped. And I think he and the receiver felt that they had a chance to make the play. It was Byron Marshall. But when he, by the time he had released the ball, Jalen Ramsey had gotten his balance back, looked up, the ball's coming right to him. Shocking he didn't come up with the interception. It's third and one. Ramsey was intent on being the next best number eight on the field today. As Freeman gets a first down, and he has been a huge playmaker for the Seminoles all over the field. Had a chance to end the drive right here. And he slips, and all this Marshall starts to... Well, he looked over at Jalen Ramsey, and the ball's in the air. He didn't even realize it. And Ramsey, oh, man, the playmaker, the leader, with a chance to end this drive and get the ball back to Jameis Winston and slips through his fingers. And instead, that Seminole defense is sucking air here, first and ten. Hand it off to Freeman again. 
Gene Northrup stopped him. I don't know how anybody can watch Oregon and say that they're not physical. I, I just don't, I, I mean, other than you just watch them, I don't know, you get mesmerized by their uniforms, I don't know, the speed of the team. I mean, they're averaging almost six yards a carry right now. Well, they are fast. And, and I know they are. But that doesn't mean you can't be physical. I mean, and they're getting a lot of their yards on the ground between the tackles, into the teeth of that Florida State defense. So before the second down play, and the Seminoles will take a timeout on defense to perhaps get some oxygen back in some lungs for some tired guys. Ducks on a long march, already up five. After the replay reversal took the Seminoles' touchdown off the board, Ducks trying to stretch their lead. Already driven 88 yards. Second and six. And slipping after the handoff there. It was Byron Marshall, the receiver, who motioned back into the backfield, so it's third down, Kirk. He lost his footing, but that time you saw a linebacker and Reggie Northrup coming downhill in a hurry. You and I were talking at the break. We liked the, the timeout by either Jimbo Fisher or Charles Kelly to kind of regroup their team before this drive finished. And third down. Mariota's still got it. Fires far side, looking for Bayless. Timing disrupted their pressure by Mario Edwards in his fourth and six. Well, Mario Edwards, he's been talked about a lot this year. The leadership that he provides, the weight that he's lost, the commitment that he's made to this team. They get him out there in space. That time he kind of dropped. And then he ended up blitzing, and he hurried Mariota to throw that football before I think his man was ready. This time, Helfrich will send Aiden Schneider, the freshman from Portland, out. He's eight of nine. Goals. They don't attempt field goals longer than 40 very often. There's a conversation down there. The ball is spotted. A personal foul, 78 of the offense. A penalty is declined, fourth down. So they flag Cameron Hunt, the guard, for a personal foul during the play. Not a dead ball foul, so he'll decline that. And bring up fourth down. Chris, it was right in the in the middle of the, the last play. You had three Oregon players on one player from Florida State, Desmond Holland. And I think he threw a punch, and that's that's, that's why I think they called the flag. Angled attempt from 28 yards for Schneider. And they're very accurate from close range. Huge. 88-yard drive to tack on three and stretch it to an eight-point game. Tournament of Roses Parade watched around the world this morning. That float celebrating the upcoming Special Olympics World Games. It'll be here in Los Angeles, in this area. Nine days beginning July 25th. So the field goal by Schneider, after an interesting penalty that was declined, hit on that and decided to kick it away now. Field, knocked down after darting forward across the 25-yard line. And so far, Winston has avoided the turnovers that have plagued so many first halves. 13 picks in the first half, most in the FPS. Of course, after halftime, he's dialed in, played with greater urgency, and thrown with much better accuracy in those comeback wins. Yeah, most of this year, he's been just much more decisive in the second half. I mean, he's been somewhat of a, a, a just a sluggish quiet start for him through the air only five of eight for 39 yards not a whole lot of big plays because to be honest his receivers aren't getting much room to work and against this oregon secondary they fake it to cook on first down and winston has plenty of time thought about launching one downfield now tried to get it to o'leary broken up by reggie daniels with this, this Oregon defense right now, they're taking away the deep ball, so there's nowhere to go downfield, and they're taking away the underneath throws with their linebackers. Very, very, every throw that he makes, you've got these receivers, and in this case, the tight end, Nick O'Leary, they're just not used to be going up against a defense that is in such tune with their routes on every single throw. Second man handoff, Burton cuts it back. And a 93 reception guy, Rashad Green, has one catch today, Kirk, for negative three yards. See all the Fort close calls the Noles have had? Yeah, Florida State is, is accustomed to being in this situation. They, they don't panic. 
difficult. I mean, you have that many games where you're trailing. This team has just kind of looked at one another when they've been down, and it's almost literally like a light switch. And they've made an adjustment, and they play with a different intensity, a different focus, I think, that's helped them. But they're confident regardless of what the score is. This is an important third down, though. Knowles just one of five. O'Leary makes the catch, shows the good hands, and it is a first down. The entire defense, Kirk, you don't want to sit in the back out on the field. No. Important to get those yards there. No, big conversion. Nice job. Remember we talked earlier about Nick O'Leary. Tweaked his hamstring. We didn't know if he'd be able to hold up. So far in his first half, he's been able to go. Also want to talk about Troy Hill, who was on the, that play defending Nick O'Leary. A lot of questions. How would he hold up against Rashad Green? Ste stepping in for Ifo Ekpreolamu. So far, he's done a heck of a job. Winston, play action on first down. Players over the middle, complete, and that's Travis Rudolph, the freshman with a catch, into Oregon territory at the 45. And finally, there's a window for Jameis Winston to throw into. You're going to see him right through this area. The linebackers clear out. A little bit of play action here. Nice job with protection. But right there, they finally give Winston a little bit of room to work with. And when you do that, he's accurate enough to make you pay for it. 17-yard game. Deep position, takes a handoff, gets the edge, Dalvin Cook makes a man miss on the edge, tiptoes out of bounds at about the 26. Right before that player, Dargan is out of the lineup, and Tyree Robinson steps into the lineup. Watch the angle, he just checks into the game for Dargan, one of the veterans. Watch this, he tries to come out, he has a little bit of a block, but he's slow in responding. Dargan can make that play. Tyree Robinson, the freshman from San Diego, slow in getting over there and allows Florida State to have a big game. At 20 yards, and already 69 for the freshman Cook, who's got it again. To a crease and driven back by Tyree Robinson. What a good game. Dargan back in the game. Dargan needs to be back in the game. He's a guy that has paid his dues for Oregon, known as more of a special teams player early in his career. Has some very talented guys ahead of him and ahead of him. So it had to put it all together in his senior year. And really they turned to him for the, the leadership and making sure everybody's lined up and in position. Cook cuts back. Flag comes in as Cook has a first and goal, but it's in that, that holding zone. It looked at me like Bobby Hart, the right tackle, may have wrapped up Eric Armstead there up high. That's probably going to be what the call is. 51. Let's talk about Dargan, the top tackler and top interceptor. After three years as a backup and a special teams guy, finally making an impact as a starting safety. Yep. Holding, offense number 51. 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Big second down. Good spot. Yeah, yeah I, I think this is, again, the execution and how important it'll be for Jameis Winston. We, we've seen them down in this red zone. We talked about how you got to come away with touchdowns right on the right, the right side there. His, he has his hands full today going up against Eric Armstead at 6'8", 290. First penalty for the Knowles is a big one. Set up first to go at the 7, back at the 24-yard line. Straight back, flushed, chased, fires incomplete. That was Tony Washington off the edge, tracking the quarterback down. I'll tell you what, Eric Armstead this time does a heck of a job for a defensive lineman. He saw the screen. He felt it. Number nine up at the top. Watch what he does here. He feels, he sees these linemen. Now he's just trying to find the back, and he just locks on to the back. and gets allows the pressure from Washington to get home to Jameis Winston. He's a linebacker who can cover in the pass game, can rush the passer. Senior from here in California. The quickness of the Ducks defenders getting problems with those. No doubt. Offensive line. Third and nine. Winston fires a strike over the middle. First and goal. Well thrown dart. Hazes Wilson makes the catch. Yeah. Perfect timing. He gets behind Hagen right here. Watch this linebacker. You're going to see a receiver come in right behind him. This ball has to be thrown quickly. The timing is very, very important. And throwing it on a line before the safety can come up and make a play on it to separate the receiver from the ball. He's got to throw it quick. There's Reggie Daniels coming in. By throwing it the way he did, it allowed uh, Wilson to get protect himself before the big hit and take care of the football. 
Daniels actually took a hit from a teammate. And he's being looked at by the trainers. Florida State, Kirk has not been efficient in the red zone yet. Now they have another first and goal opportunity. And Daniels has attended to a chance to check the Taco Bell student section. Taco Bell in the college football playoff and provided a thousand student tickets free of charge. And you get a scarf with that ticket. There you go. Your team to Pasadena. Nice. This looks like the Oregon player Daniels is, is on his feet. This coming snap for Florida State will be the eighth snap inside the Oregon 15-yard line. And you can see they only have three points. Told you the reason I think it's a big factor is their execution is not just obviously you need to score in every game. It's because we've gotten a, a look at the Oregon offense and how quickly they execute and how they can get that Florida State defense on its heels. You cannot settle for field goals and expect to beat Marcus Mariota and the Oregon Ducks. You have to get touchdowns when you get down to this area. Stout red zone defense is why this game's a lot lower scoring than most of us thought it would be. Ducks for showing pressure up the middle and a flag before the snap. Knowles offensive line reacting to it. Prior to the snap, 12 start, 70 offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Where Matias really quickly. Quiet night so far for Rashad Green. Down at the bottom this time for Jameis. He's got single coverage as well. Houston looked that way. Green covered. Now fires into the end zone. Out of the way and complete. Eric Dargan toughing it out. Got a hand on it. Not only is he toughing it out, this guy does a good job of staying with a receiver in space. He gets his hands on his football. There's Coleman closing in. Watch him step in front of that, in front of Rudolph, get both his hands on that ball. Very, Florida State very, very fortunate that Dargan does not intercept that football that Jameis Winston threw. Took a chance there. So smart, instinctive. That's why he's got six picks this year. Often in the right place. So second and goal. They hand it to Cook, who cuts it back. Running through some arm tackles down to the three. With what vision from this young running back and the acceleration. Watch him put his right foot in the ground when he sees the, the, the cut back behind Cam Irving, the big center. Does a good job. That ball can bounce to the outside or it can cut back. He felt the, the, the leverage of the defense to the outside, recognized it early enough, pressed it, and then cut it back behind Irving and picks up good yards to give him a shot here on third down inside the five-yard line. The other one of those important plays near the goal line. They need three. Empty backfield. It's Green in the slot to the right. Play clock down. Did he get it off? No, flag. Did Fisher... Get First snap, no. the game. Offense in the five. Oh, that is huge. Still It'll back them up to the eight-yard line. Jameis didn't see the play clock in time. It, it's huge, but it, at the same time, it does give you a little bit more room to work with. I mean, it's not as if Aguayo all of a sudden is going to struggle if they have to settle for a field goal. I mean, it's, it's, it's not the worst thing that could happen. You'd like to see your quarterback in tune with the play clock. But, but it's, it gives Rashad Green and Nick O'Leary a little bit more room. That's typically who they try to get the football to down in this area. Green is the closest receiver now to the offensive lineman. Right here. Williams lined up to the right of Winston. Winston looking left. Now back over the middle. Fires incomplete. There was a collision. O'Leary fell down. No flag. Ty Tyree Robinson tangled up with him. Wow, it was pretty physical. Nick O'Leary was locked up with Robinson, the freshman. Remember the hamstring? It doesn't seem to affect him, but boy, they are locked up and pushing on each other. Oh, wow. That's no wonder Nick O'Leary's looking. What in the heck's going on here? Where's the call? CC crew missed that one. Tyree Robinson just tugged in the front of the jersey. Wow. But. Regardless of the call, they have to settle for a field goal again. Third time inside the red zone, potentially two field goals, and the turnover on downs. Aguayo, who has never missed in his career inside the 40. 
knocks it right through. Once again, the Seminoles march a long way, 65 yards in this case, cannot find the end zone, although it should have been a first and goal there. Don Pell, the defensive coordinator from Oregon. I mean, you hate to tell your guys, hey, we're going to give up some yards, but that's part of the plan. Give up some yards, lock down in the red zone, and force field goals. Coming up at halftime, the Buick halftime report. Let's see performances from both the Oregon and Florida State bands and preview tonight's second playoff semifinal between Alabama and Ohio State down in New Orleans. Whether you had called holding or pass interference, you could have called either one of them. It would have been first and goal. And Jimbo Fisher was hot to the officials in that timeout. Oh, yeah, he sure was. Deservingly so. Deep kickoff by Aguayo will be a touchback. The winner here to collide with the winner tonight in New Orleans at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, Monday, January 12th. Interesting. The winner of this game will be the confetti. They'll be the trophy. But then whoever it is will very quickly turn to the thoughts of an even bigger game and who their opponent will be tonight, Alabama or Ohio State. It reminds me a lot of the AFC and NFC Championship weekend. You, you celebrate, you're excited, you won your conference, and now you move on to the Super Bowl. It kind of has that feel to it. Neither side said that they'll celebrate for very long. So the Ducks back to work. Slipping down there is Marshall after a very short game. Marshall hasn't really gotten on track, hasn't become a factor yet. No, it's an inside-outside game. I mean, Oregon has had a lot of success with going fast and, and getting the ball up the middle, getting the ball to the outside. There he goes again, keeping it. Mariota up the middle, shows the acceleration, then slides down after gaining first down yardage. And watch the defensive end collapse down. Pulls it out, then he gets a nice block on the linebacker, Terrence Smith, and then there's just grass. Plenty of room, plenty of room there with his speed to pick up great yards. Now play action on first down. Mariota looks down into coverage. It's caught by Keenan Lowe. Fly comes in as he's hauled down by Darby. But the back shoulder throw that time. The defensive back was too far upfield, so Mariota throws it back. The receiver adjusts to it, and Darby never saw the football. I think it's going to come back. They're going to call maybe a push-off at the top of the round. Pass interference. Offense number seven. 15-yard penalty for the previous back. First down. It wasn't the P.I. call that Fisher wanted, but it's a huge one because it nullifies a massive game. At the top of his route on these back shoulder throws, the receiver has to be careful of ex extending his arms and trying to just kind of pass that defensive back on to come back. See some jogging there between oh, yeah. Long, Low and Darby. 31-yard gain taken away instead of 15-yard penalty. So first and 25. Mariota flips the screen short. This is Freeman. Breaks a tackle. And the freshman showing his muscle. Gaining yardage back to near the original line of scrimmage. And that's the part of, of his game that is so instrumental in allowing him to have a great true freshman year. Is he's he's powerful. At, at 230 pounds, he can run through those arm tackles. Catch made by Stanford. He's forced out. Tyler Hunter on the tackle. Yeah, his nickname is Rolls Royce, but he really runs more like an SUV than a luxury sedan, doesn't it? No doubt about that. And how about Mariota just in such rhythm? Terrence Smith tried to sneak in a blitz on that play. And as soon as he blitzed, just a quick, simple little throw to the outside to Bayless. No problem. Recognized it. Executed it. Third and three. Mariota. Now pressure. Backpedaling. Stays alive, fires over the middle, complete for a first down. Carrington down inside the 35. And you see Mariota's elusiveness paying off. Yes, that's all about spacing. You had one receiver go vertical to take the inside linebacker out. You had one receiver out in the flat. It opens up a huge void right in the middle, and Mariota finds it. Now Freeman. Taking the handoff, all the Knowles defenders notice on tape, Kirk, how dangerous he is because he keeps looking downfield even when he's scrambling. Yeah, you have a receiver go here, you have a receiver here, then you have another receiver that kind of holds up right here, and that's really where, what he's looking at doing, trying to take advantage of that spacing. Guy clears out, look at the opening in the middle of that. The patience, eyes downfield, and makes the throw. 
It's Tyner in the game, and he's got the football. Thomas Tyner running through a tackle inside the 20, all down inside the 10. Back healthy after missing the last three with a shoulder injury and making an impact. Well, this is amazing to see the combination of Freeman and now Tyner healthy. Look him run. He runs right through Tyler Hunter coming up in run support. Watch playing quickly on first and goal. Tyner so eager to, to help Freeman out, make an impact in this game after missing the stretch run. Still in the game. They fake it to him. Mariota fires far side. Marshall hammers down near the goal line. Ramsey prevented a touchdown, but the Ducks are close. You've got to get off blocks on the perimeter. That time you saw Stanford make a great block. It's, it almost allowed Marshall to get into the end zone, but those corners out there against those receivers, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, not just defending the pass, but being physical to get off those blocks. They flip it. I'm short. Out of bounds, just short of the goal line is Marshall again. Knowles did a good job reacting there. That hurry up that time, the Knowles only had two defenders out there. There are three receivers to the top, only two defenders. Another quick play. And waltzing into the end zone is Tyner to finish off this touchdown drive. And Oregon stretches the lead to double digits. Not only do you have a Florida State defense giving up points, you have a Florida State defense right now that is confused. They're frustrated because they can't get lined up fast enough in order to try to give themselves a chance. It's stopping the execution that's in warp speed right now for Mariota and the Ducks. How could anyone get lined up fast enough when they're playing at that tempo? Schneider. This time they don't try any trick or the straightforward PAT. And he knocks it through. And for the fourth time this season, the Seminoles are down double digits with halftime approaching. Chris, look up at the left. This is the touchdown. The previous play, they didn't even have anybody up there to stop the play. They were fortunate that the, ball, the previous play didn't get in the end zone, but you can see Florida State read their body language. They're giving up points, and they're getting frustrated. First college football playoff semifinal at the Rose Bowl, presented by Northwestern Mutual, with aerial coverage brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get Direct TV. The important two minutes and 18 seconds coming up before halftime as the Knowles have fallen 12 points behind. Well, Mariota on that last drive, six of six, had a 12-yard run, and more importantly, as this game goes on more and more, just in complete command of running that tempo offense and making the reads against the Knowles who have had three weeks to get ready. Logan boots it away. It's short and returnable by Kermit Whitfield. And getting some traffic out near the 30-yard line. Well, beginning a year ago here in this setting, the Seminoles fell behind Auburn 21-3, rallied, of course, to win late. This time, four times this year, by nine-plus points down, five times trailed or tied in the fourth quarter. But Kirk, in some of those comebacks, here it's NC State, Louisville, Miami, they got points just before halftime to get some momentum. That's exactly right, and Jameis Winston knows that. He's got two minutes and 12 seconds to try to drive this team down the field and get points on the board. Very familiar position for this team. Winston complete across the middle, coming out of the backfield. I think the catch was Williams. To make these last couple minutes even more important, Florida State member, they defer. So they will get the ball to start the second half. That, that puts a, a lot on this drive for the Knowles. Winston well protected. Plenty of time for someone to work free, and it's looped downfield and caught. Was Williams again out of the backfield a tough matchup when they're in Oregon territory great patience Carlos Williams lines up right here He's he may be the fourth option. I mean, he's a check down who just kept going down the sideline and got down behind Prebo He was supposed to be in the backfield How about the timing the protection and the patience that time by Jameis Winston to find the running back down the right sideline? 
Johnson across the middle. Caught by Erman Lane, and the freshman takes a big hit. But there's a first down at the 25. That was Daniels who's back in the game delivering the blow. Yeah, you saw Prevo. You're going to see a, a route here and back to the inside. Two Ducks defenders run right into each other. Prevo, the defensive end, gets in the way of the corner. CSA. It was a quickly move to the 25, and now a whistle before the play. Yeah, they just play so well, Kirk, when they feel it's urgency. Already... Yet Lane, who made the catch and then took the blow back down on the field, but when they feel... Before the snap, illegal substitution on the defense, 12 men in the formation, five-yard penalty, still first down. When they feel threatened, when they feel endangered, it's an, just a completely different intensity and tempo from Florida State. No doubt about that. Ermon Lane, who took that big blow, is up. And it, it, like I said earlier, it's really hard to describe it, but it's like a, it's just a flip of the switch. The previous play on that, that nice slant that they executed took a big hit that time by Reggie Daniels. Then another one from Cissé. He said, hey, enough, enough's enough. I'm going to take a little breather. So first and five after the penalty. Williams cuts it back. Has a first down inside the 15. Seminoles having to look for some other answers, Kirk. You talk about Rashad Green with 93 catches this year. O'Leary with 47 combined. They've got two catches for one yard. That's it. Yeah. And, they, and that's Jimbo Fisher constantly feeling out of defense, trying to find answers, making adjustments. I'm a minute of the half now. Winston. Again. A ton of time, rolling out, taking off, and knocked down at the 10. 41 seconds to play. Good job of not only picking up yards, but getting out of bounds. Still have the two timeouts with 41 seconds to go. I'm Oregon playing some man, and that's why it freed up the underneath for Winston to pull the ball down and take off. Again, we've not seen him do that a lot this year because of the ankle, but now healthier he can. Back down in this red zone, but they've settled for field goal, and they get a touchdown. Leary in motion, and they run it to that left side. Williams breaks free, step on step, standing up, touchdown. Williams find the end zone for the first time, and this pattern repeats of getting points before halftime. Knowles say, you know what? We can score in a hurry, too. Six plays, 71 yards in a minute 35. And Carlos Williams, the veteran, the senior, stepping up, making some plays. But the Oregon Ducks brought the blitz that time. And the offensive line from Florida State picked it up nicely. And that's what freed up Williams to take it into the end zone. Aguayo makes it a five-point game. Williams, who had a concussion against the Gators, have missed the ACC championship game. Hasn't been a factor in the second half of the season much. See these two linebackers, Chris, coming up on the blitz. Nice job up front by this offensive line, picking it up, feeling it. The center, Cam Irving, comes back on the blitz. Boy, I'll tell you, Cam Irving, look at 75 to the middle of the field. He's on a double team. He senses the blitz. He turns back and picks that up. And we have another Bobby Hart downfield. Great execution execution up front. Made it pretty easy for Carlos Williams to get into the end zone. Sure was. That is a running lane. <laughs> Williams gets the credit, but really it was the line and the execution. We'll see what Helfrich likes to do with the final 36 seconds. Ducks do have three timeouts. Remember, they are not the best in field goal kicking, so. You're right. They have to go a long way yeah. to get in range unless they can set it up with a return here. Yeah. They don't panic. You know, they get down and they've done it all year. I don't know, it's almost like it's more of a comfort zone for them. Seems like they react much better than so collectively when they get down. Touchback. So Mariota, 36 seconds to work with. Marcus. 17 of 24 hasn't yet thrown a touchdown pass in fact both these quarterbacks who have a touchdown pass in all of their career starts haven't found the end zone yet no not yet and Mariota also has run the football about 39 yards so far on the ground Jameis Winston a quiet night 
but it's early. He usually turns into a different man when he comes back after halftime. So we'll see if he's able to make some adjustments with Jimbo Fisher to try to free up Rashad Green and Nick O'Leary, who haven't been much of a factor at all in this game in the first half. Freeman just takes the handoff and spins back. And we'll see if the Ducks just let the time run out. We'll stop the clock. Ducks do spend one here. Both teams showing excellent offensive balance in the first half. Good run pass mix, but Kirk, it's been some points left on the field, really mostly by Florida State in this first half. That's why they're behind. Yeah, I mean, they, they've had opportunities, and we knew that that would be a big storyline in this game is when they got inside that 20, would they be able to execute and, and come away with touchdowns? And they've not been able to. And the other thing, the big story is going to be Charles Kelly. He has the unenviable job of being the defensive coordinator trying to stop Marcus Mariota, and he's going to have to get on the grease board and make a lot of changes, maybe streamline their plan, make it simpler so these guys can get lined up. If you can't get lined up, obviously it's hard to stop Mariota and the tempo that these guys run so well. Charles Kelly and Don Pelham's counterpart, each in their first year as defensive coordinator, they have experience at the schools, but it's their first year on the hot seat. DC. No doubt. Mariota flips it short. This is Carrington who makes the catch and does scoot out of bounds with 23 seconds to go. And a flag comes down on the far side. Holding. Offense 85. 10 yard penalty to the spot of the foul. Second down. They got Stanford, the receiver, blocking and negate the gain and perhaps change the mindset of Helfrich here with 23 seconds to go. They got all the way up to the 45 yard line and you know, with still a couple timeouts and with the way they're executing you never know what they might have thought but it does push them back to their own 30. Mariota rifles the ball over the middle diving attempt picked off by Andrews and Mariota throws just his third interception of the season wow you do not see that happen very often from marcus mariota and it's why scott frost is willing to take some chances late in a half he definitely got his hands underneath that the elbows are underneath that is an interception by nate andrews a playmaker for this Knowles defense over the last couple years and now you get the football back to Jameis winston still with 16 seconds remaining and with two timeouts remember with a while you only need about 15 yards to have a shot they have 16 seconds winston fires far side complete an effective play as Wilson scoots out of bounds to save those timeouts. Three great, seconds to go. Great recognition. A soft corner into the boundary. An easy throw. An out route. Throw it. Take the yards and get out of bounds. One more of those and they'd be in pretty comfortable range for a while. It was a career long of 53. They could kick one from even farther. Short catch across the middle by timeout. Green. First down. Call the timeout. Still have another timeout. That way, if you want to try to get it in the middle of the field, run the ball into the middle of the field, call that last timeout, give them a little bit of a better chance. So that more than likely, you'll see Jimbo Fisher do here is either with Dalvin Cook or Carlos Williams, try to get the football into that middle where you give Aguayo, who I, I would contend one of the best college kickers that I think I've ever seen. I mean, the... the Great leg strength, incredible accuracy, he and lost, he's loose. Uh, Look at him. He lost this year's Lou Groza Award by two votes after winning the trophy last year. Craddock and Camillion won it. So, Helfrich was so much trust in Mariota. It's just shocking when you see him make a mistake like that, and Florida State could, could grab three points they never expected to get. No. I mean, it just, it, it's... Not part of the way his his uh, computer is programmed. No, he <laughs> just don't see it. Eight seconds to go. Winston fires. Oh, just off the hands of Rashad Green, who was inside the 20. Now with three seconds to go, 
Aguayo trots out right near sort of the career long range. What's more rare, Mariota throwing an interception or Rashad Green dropping a ball? <laughs> you know, right. We've seen some strange I mean, things. I, I know here. it's a tough catch, but not for him. Rashad Green catches that ball. He's had a funky first half. Two, the way, two catches for four yards. I think a gutsy play call by Jimbo Fisher to take that chance to get it that much further. I thought he might get it just to the middle of the field and pick up maybe another three or four yards on the run. And in his great career with just three misses, this is a potential career long for Alberto Aguayo from 54 yards. Off the post, and now one back. But you can't do it off the goalpost. It's a dead ball. <laughs> Dargan had a notion. Shades of the iron ball. And Aguayo, by a narrow margin, missing for just the fourth time in his career. And Mariota's interception does not cost the Ducks, who lead by five at halftime. AT&T brings this inside the headset now. Mark Helfrich working his way toward Tom Rinaldi. And plenty to talk about in this first half. In the meantime, Heather Cox has Jimbo Fisher. Chris, thanks so much. Coach, you are no stranger to comebacks, as you showed in those last two possessions. What's the biggest adjustment you need to make to keep that streak alive? Well, I think just keep making plays right now. Don't worry about the outcome. Keep playing it. we got to execute in the red zone. We had some chances down in the red zone on the one, and we could have walked in right there, and we let one slip away on another thing. But score touchdowns in the red zone, moving the ball very good and on defense. I like what we're making, nice adjustments. They're moving it, but we're getting some good stops. Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Let's head over to the Oregon sideline with Tom Rinaldi. Heather, thank you very much. Coach, you have the lead at halftime, but you're playing a team which has come back nine times this season. How do you keep that from happening in the second half? Just do our deal. You know, we're not playing very well, not playing very smart, not playing cleanly enough. Uh, defensively could have finished some things and, and got some penalties. Offensively had some penalties, and, and uh, we'll, we'll discuss that. But uh, just got to play, play a little bit cleaner. One adjustment you most need to make. Um, just that, you know, stay the, stay the course. We, you know, had a, had a huge play there, and we, we had a broken route on the, on the pick. Uh, had a huge play. They got called back for the holding. You know, just a bunch of just little things here and there. Appreciate it, Coach. Good luck. Chris? Tom, thank you. Neither Heisman quarterback with a touchdown pass in the first half. And Aguaya, who had the distance from 54, boinking it off the upright. Wow, that's We have incredible. seen plenty of surprising things in this first half. And, and expect him to always make them. But buckle up because it's going to get interesting in the second half. This is where typically you see Oregon and Florida State play their best football the next 30 minutes. And well said, two second half teams. The Noles will get the football to begin it. Down by five. End of the first half in Pasadena. Stay tuned after these messages for the Buick Halftime Report. Second half. Welcome back to the college football playoff at the Rose Bowl game. Presented by Northwestern Mutual. Interesting first half. Oregon had the ball five minutes less than Florida State, but squeezed in three more plays. Both offenses, Kirk, moving the ball pretty well, but all the important plays in that half really came down inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, they sure did. We, we saw Florida State in many cases have to settle for a field goal. They didn't convert it on that fourth down, but look at the Home Depot coaches' adjustments. It's what can this Knowles defense do to get Marcus Mariota off track and running and executing this offense? Simple zone read. He pulls around, picks up big yards here. They blitz him. They get to him. He's able to pull away and find an open receiver. And this is probably the theme of the first half, the tempo, how it impacted Florida State. In many cases, not even getting lined up right. Definitely on their heels, losing their aggressive nature. And that's something that uh, Charles Kelly's going to have to try to come up with an answer for. Chance for that Knowles defense to rest. Now Florida State will go back on offense to begin the second half. Logan kicks it away. To Whitfield at the one. Herman can't quite get the corner. Good coverage from Oregon. Knocked down at the 20-yard line by 
Keenan Lowe, the receiver. I love to see these receivers from Oregon on kickoff coverage. I remember Jeff Mayo years ago from Oregon. Score a touchdown. Next thing you know, he's downfield covering a kickoff. Took more pride in covering the kickoff and making a tackle. And there's Keenan Lowe continuing that tradition. And you also have Charles Nelson, another freshman wide receiver, covers kicks and makes a lot of plays on kickoff coverage. Get Nelson, the freshman receiver. He's had 16 tackles this year. <laughs> That's an insane number. Yeah, he's a little guy. He's 5'8", 170 pounds, but they say he's just a ball hawk. He goes in and throws his body in there. So the second half, when Winston typically shines, they start from the 20, and Jameis fires over the middle, complete for a 20-yard gain. It's Travis Rudolph who stepped up because Green's had a quiet game. Watch the middle of the Oregon defense underneath open up. The two linebackers separate. There's the window. Jameis made a throw earlier in the first half, one of the few where he, he didn't have somebody in his face and one of the few where he had a man open. They start the second half where the Red Sea just parts and he makes an easy throw. 20-yard game. Cook cutting it back. Desmond mentioned he was very productive in the first half, closing in on 100 yards. Do you see, expect to see a heavier dose of number four in the second half? Yeah, well, Chippewa usually just goes with a hot hand. And, and as, as much as now that Cook looked good, there are moments where the senior Carlos Williams came in there and did a nice job as well. But I'm going to tell you something. If I'm Jimbo Fisher, I'm challenging my offensive line. Because as much zone and as soft as Oregon has been with coverage, the answer is running the football and controlling the line of scrimmage. On second and nine, Winston has excellent time, and again, fires across the middle, complete for a first down, and that is Rashad Green, who so often becomes a factor in the second half. You see the adjustment from Jimbo Fisher? He's attacking the interior of the Oregon defense. They're sitting back in cover two, trying to keep everything in front of them, so they're going to start to try to attack the linebackers from Oregon if they're not getting the proper depth and recognizing those crossing routes. Here's another first down throw. Again, over the middle, incomplete at time. Overled Travis Rudolph. Down to Heather Cox. Chris, now just three catches for Rashad Green. No catches for Nick O'Leary. Jimbo Fisher's take on it. We are taking what the Oregon defense is giving us. It has nothing to do with Nick O'Leary's tweaked hamstring that he pulled in warm-ups. Yes, he'd like to get the ball more to Rashid, as you just saw, and to Nick. The biggest thing, red zone execution. We have got to score touchdowns instead of field goals inside the 20. Here's a second and ten handoff to Cook. Who bounces it, now cuts back, follows a block from Rudolph, and Muscles loses the football. Oregon's got it at the end of the run. The ball came out. And the true freshman pumps it up. What a great effort by Derek Malone not to give up on the play. 22 will come in from behind and rip that football out before Cook's knee touches the ground. This is a great game. Florida State did a nice job on the outside zone play, but 22 Malone, who was behind the play, was no longer involved in the play, but he didn't give up on it, came back to rip the ball away and create the turnover. You know, I always talk, Kirk, it's no matter how brilliant you are as a, as a true freshman back, you often see guys lose the ball in plays like that. Mariota. First down throw in traffic on the edge, and Nelson couldn't come up with it. Just a different level of intensity. Bigger, stronger guys ripping at the ball. Cook has worked hard to try to conquer that fumbling problem. Kimbo Fisher right away going over and talking to him. And I think that's important for a head coach to do with any back or anybody that makes a crucial mistake, let alone a true freshman. Mariota takes it to Freeman. And now fires. Carrington running free. Still on his feet. Hurdle the tackler and dives now near the 35-yard line of Florida State. And the Ducks up to the line quickly. That, there was a bust there in coverage, a combination of coverages, half the defense playing zone and on the right side playing man. So when Carrington broke free, he had a lot of room to work to the right side. 34-yard gain. They barely got the marker set before Mariota snapped it. And now Nelson driven out after a short gain. Much better job by Florida State there getting off. Now, you're going to see him work across. But when he does, watch he, once he makes the catch, look at the man-to-man. -man, and that allows him to just be able to pick that up and run for more yards because of the coverage that the corners went downfield. Not to mention a pretty nifty move there to get around P.J. Williams. The flag on the field near side near the line of scrimmage. Bucks were moving so fast, were they properly lined up with that last no play?
illegal formation on the offense. More than four men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. The answer is no. It's a testament to what Chip Kelly started here. Mark Helfrich and Scott Frost continue. Not a whole lot of miscues with this hurry up. They never win the time of possession battle I mean, three times under Helfrich as a head coach, but they often run more plays than the opponent. And that's the case here so far. Not only is it a penalty, but it slows down their rhythm on a penalty like that. Nelson in motion. They fake it to Freeman. Mariota on the roll. Cuts it back. Now fires late. Complete to Bayless, who's been a weapon today. And the tight end muscling down near the 10. And Farrell Brown is smiling. The man who suffered that grisly injury. Bayless doing his best to fill in for Kirk and have a big ball game. 6'6", 250 pounds. Makes a nice catch, but then picks up valuable yards after it with his physicality. He got 30 yards there. The Knowles barely lined up before Freeman hammers ahead. Here's a flag. Northrop made the tackle. His face mask it looked like on Northrop. Well, you do those kinds of things when you're personal tired. Personal foul, face mask, defense on the foul. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. It might be a step, so you're reaching and grabbing, and that's where the penalty is coming in. It's almost desperation mode. You know, I mean, they come up with a big 30-yard gain, and before you can really reassess what just happened, the ball snaps. And then, now you're trying to make a play, and there's five reaching in with his hands, doing anything you can. Grab a jersey, grab a leg, head chase, grab a face mask to try to prevent him from getting into the end zone. First and goal. They don't always quick snap it. They'll sometimes look to the sideline for the adjustment. Scott Frost is the play caller from a Nebraska quarterback and NFL safety. Freeman running right. Cuts it back. Muscles into the end zone. And the Ducks stretch the lead in their first possession of the second half. March 69 yards and five quick plays. Second touchdown for the Dutch true freshman tailback. Schneider to put the lead at 12. The fumble by the young freshman, Dalvin Cook, sets this up, the touchdown here. Watch the center here, Chris. This is really impressive. You don't see a lot of centers. Grassu, watch him pull and seal it backside. Nice job right there. Nifty footwork with a guy that has a bum ankle. Does a nice job there. Opens up that running lane, and the Ducks go on the board again. This personal foul, keep an eye on number seven, Matthew Thomas from the Seminoles on the extra point. After the kick? Got his hand up in the face of Washington, so the Ducks up a dozen for the second time today will kick off from midfield. Richard Freshman has been a little bit prone to some loss of plays this year. Great player. Part of the frustration of trying to defend this Oregon offense. And Logan just boots it way out of the end zone. The Ducks moving efficiently in that last round. Yeah, five plays, 69 yards, a minute, 32. A little bit of everything for Mariota, making some great decisions. The big tight end, Bayless. And then watch Grassu playing with a bum ankle, missed the last few games. Here, pulling and then sealing Derek Mitchell to free up the run there for the touchdown. Winder Kirk, you know, the tight end hasn't been featured much since Farrow Brown's awful injury. Bayless has as many catches in this Rose Bowl as he had all season and for more yards. So he has stepped up and perhaps the Noles not paying up to now a lot of attention to him. And with Mariota, he does not predetermine. He's reading the coverage and if Bayless is open, he's going to make the throw. So it's Williams back in the game and Carlos Williams quickly knifing back to the left for a close to 10-yard gain. 
Marcus Williams has a little bit, I don't know if he's healthier. He's got, he's got a little bit of a, a different feel to him tonight. I mean, he is running with, with passion. He bounced over in the pregame. He shook my hand and said hello. And I said, you feeling great? He said, yeah. He had a concussion and it had missed some time. Didn't play in the ACC championship game. And second and very short has to fight for a first down across the 35. The reason Oregon's been able to play so much zone, kind of a bend but don't break type of defense, is they've relied on that defensive line. DeForest Buckner, 44, Alex Bocucci, 56, and Eric Armstead, number nine. These three guys have been asked to hold up, eat up blocks, free up those linebackers, and not only are they doing that, sometimes they're getting penetration against the Florida State O-line. Alvin Cook lined up deep. They fake it to him. Winston rolling back and fires underneath for the fullback, Stevenson. He was out near midfield before Daniel stops him. Another first down. Well, they just lost him in coverage. Something you don't see very often. He's right here. He's going to delay and just work his way underneath. You combine that with the action. You get the linebackers out of position. A nice block there by Nick O'Leary. He's fallen off his back foot because of the pressure that he feels from Prevo, but still throws an accurate ball there to the big fullback. Play action on first down. Winston pressure loses the ball momentarily, picks it up, but is sacked by Tony Washington. Second sack for the Ducks. A delayed blitz that confuses the offensive line. And again, Jameis Winston, he's right here. Looks like he's in coverage. He'll sneak out and then he'll come. And a lot of Dalvin Cook doesn't see him because he comes so late. The line didn't adjust that way, so he comes free again. We've seen Prevo come free a lot off the edge of some delayed blitzes that the offensive lineman or the running back have not been able to account for. Washington under pressure. Tyson Coleman cleaned it up. And they lost 11 yards. Play clock down at one as Winston just gets it away. Fires near side incomplete. Just over the head of the defender Dargan and short Rashad Green who continues to have a frustrating game. Yeah, it's, it's very, very surprising. Not seeing Rashad Green held in check. What makes that an amazing storyline is when his, his Epo at Crayola move is not in this lineup for Oregon. We thought it'd be a clear advantage for Florida State and Green. But Troy Hill told us, I got some for him. And I will jaw at him, I will jam him, and I'll shut him down. That's a brash statement against a great receiver, but so far Green hasn't been an impact player. Third and 21. Far sideline, catch made, first down, it's Wilson. A nice strong throw by Winston. Boy, just make sure, just check that he gets his feet down for the first down. It's a nice catch, gets both his feet down. Remember that play, Kirk, third and 21. Yeah, that is a huge play to keep this drive alive, and Jameis is going a little bit of tempo himself. They're down a dozen points to a rolling offense. Keep the drive alive with a big conversion, and that green uh, short gain as they get it to the edge. Go back to the previous play, similar formation. You see Bobo Wilson, who's lined up at the line. He just gets lost in coverage. That's the young man, Chris Cisse. I don't know if he and Eric Dargan were on the same page. You have one guy's a senior, one guy's a freshman who was in for Ivo Ekpreola move. My guess is Cisse that time should have sunk back in coverage, especially on third and 21. Don't worry about the underneath throw. And a second down handoff dragged down. It's tough for a defense. You think we're going to get him off the field here. It's third and 21. All of a sudden, the big pass, and it's the Ducks who are backpedaling now. Yeah. Now it sets up another third down. Obviously, much more manageable at third and three. Four of nine on third down, and unable to convert that fourth and goal. Williams is the tailback. That's Rudolph motioning in the slot. Winston's going to throw. And they find the spot in the zone. It's Green beginning to get involved. First down in the red zone. Jameis Winston uses his eyes to keep the linebacker, Rodney Hardrick, into the middle of this defense. Really good job of using his eyes to keep the, the, the one threat was the linebacker 48 of possibly coming over, but he does a good job of keeping him 
Hardrick away from where he needed to be to come over to be able to make a play on Rashad Green. Using his eyes to the middle, coming back, making a great throw on third down to Green. And now, as you said, Chris, Green starting to get a lot more involved. First down play action. Winston on the run. Fires back down near the goal line. Caught and reaching for the end zone. Touchdown, Travis Rudolph. That's how a championship team responds. You thought the Noles were going to go away? How about the call here on first and ten? Great mixture of plays by Jimbo Fisher. Some runs, some throws, and on first and ten, Oregon brings some pressure. They go play action, and Jameis Winston rolls away from it to get outside of the pressure and makes another accurate throw, this time to the freshman Rudolph. Winston's first touchdown pass continues his streak. At least one TD pass in every career start. All 27 now. 75 yards in 10 plays. And the Guayo knocks it through. A crucial touchdown march from the defending champions. No doubt about it. Oregon's defense. Watch how they attack the line of scrimmage on first and ten. Rudolph comes from the backside all the way over. And it, Jameis waits to the last second to get him to clear and get away from the safety. Eric Dargan puts the ball there. And a great effort by Rudolph to extend the ball for the touchdown. National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper as the San Gabriels are bathed in late day sunlight. Byron Marshall from his five knockdown. You do love the San Gabriels, don't you? Pretty soon. Yeah, growing, growing up to your heart. Well, growing up in the Big Ten country in the heart of Ohio, you, you, it's dark at about four o'clock. It's gray. It's cold. There's snow on the ground. And my whole life, I would turn on the Rose Bowl, and it was just like going from black and white TV to high def. And mm. to be able to look at this in person now for nine straight years, it never gets old looking at that, that view. To me, this is the best setting in sports. I would love to see the national championship played in this venue every single year. This is the <laughs> best office in the world, by the way. Best. This is the best. Mojave Desert, by the way, on the other side. <laughs> you will, you'll coach me up. All right, now it's the Ducks' turn. The lead cut back to five. Winston flips it on the edge to Carrington. And then all of a sudden, a pretty good job on those wide passes of closing things down. Yeah, we're, we're going to try to give you a feel. There's Scott Frost, top right, who calls the play. Down on the right, they're, sig they're already signaling the play. The play's already been called. Mariota's already, everybody's on the same page. We're 10 seconds in, they're ready to snap the ball. We're going to give you a feel of how quickly this happens throughout the next few sequence of plays. And off the Tyner. And he's got a first down, and now they'll really ramp up now, the now, tempo. Now watch out, Scott Frost. Watch it. See See how quick he calls this. He may have already called. The guys are already signaling. And, and the card's upside down, by the way. I hope that wasn't important. <laughs> but Mariota, look, he's ready to go. Ten seconds. Snap the ball. And Tyner again cuts it back. In case you're wondering, it's a combination of signals and symbols so that the cards often don't mean a whole lot. No, no, but the, the point is the timing of it. Mariota looking over right now to the cards and to the different signals, some of them are decoy and some of the real call. But Mariota snap and clapping his hands. He's ready for the snap. Play action. Mariota flips it short. It's Bayless with another catch, and he muscles forward, shoved out by Williams on the far side, but it's his first down. Yeah, Scott Frost has already made the next call. Literally, he said within two seconds, he needs to make the call to get it down when they're really going tempo as they are right now. Helfrich will help out occasionally if he's swimming in, in plus words. Yeah. Because your head can swim when you play this fast. Mariota thinking fast, makes a completion on the far side, and running free is Darren Carrington. Tempo is deadly, and execution equally so. They ran the same play the previous play, where he threw it out into the flat to the tight end. Right? Bayless made a great catch. They come back with a very similar look. And this time, two Florida State defenders go out with Bayless, and that opens it up. Mariota does a great job of reading it, and he makes the throw. This quarterback duel is heating up. Mariota's first touchdown pass of the game. Schneider stretches the lead for a third time, back to a dozen points. 56 yards, Kirk. So here's the tight end on the previous play. He's going to go out the flat. Carrington's going to go down the sideline. 
And Mario is going to make this read. He sees that he's got it open in the flat, and he takes it. All right? And then the strength gets the first down. The very next play, now watch this. Now you got the tight end in the flat, and you got two Florida State defenders. They take the tight end away. Gives him a nice lane right here, and he makes the throw on time and allows him to come back underneath the safety because he got the football out of his hands quickly. That was the key to being able to make that cut and eventually take it to the house for another duck touchdown. The duck getting a workout <laughs> as Winston must now answer again down a dozen points after Mariota's 56-yard touchdown pass to Carrington. Wilson's going to bring it out, or thought he was, now he is. The double hesitation by Jesus Wilson, now he gets free momentarily and is driven out at the 12-yard line. It's the ball here when he initially stepped out. Remember, it's not his foot, yep. but it's the football. And it looked, you know, that's a tough angle there, but regardless, he came out. But I, I don't know if he had to come out, but it wasn't just that his foot came outside. It was that the football needed to break the plane. So I just was going to blow the whistle in a split second. Yeah. Wilson hadn't taken that out. And you know, it's one of those gray areas. He made a mistake just to be safe. Probably better to take it out. He did very well to get back to the 17 after all that. Could Winston answer. Again, working the middle of the field and finding Cook for about seven. That's definitely the adjustment that Jimbo Fisher made with Jameis Winston. And then because they weren't able to make plays to the outside of the Oregon defense with Rashad Green and the other receivers, right away we've seen them in these first couple of drives in the second half attack the middle underneath and when you make a simple throw like that similar to what we just saw with oregon now you get the linebackers next time the back is in front of them to come up and it can open up a nice route behind them they thought they could attack the duck inside linebackers didn't they winston breaks free knocked down across the 30 a first down effective it's, it's not marcus mariota and he never would claim to be these guys do it so differently but because he is healthier, he's able to run a little bit of zone read himself. And on second down and short, why not use it when you're thinking tailback, tailback, tailback. Every once in a while, kind of like what Andrew Luck used to do at Stanford, once in a while you save that with a quarterback that's athletic enough to get some yards. Play action on first down. Winston fires far side. Gets made by Herman Lane, who makes a man miss. Ducks knock him down after a five-yard game. Really impressed with this speed of Oregon. I, you know, that's what they've always been known for. They are closing in on these Florida State receivers. Mariota closing in on a 300 yard game. Does have the uncharacteristic interception that didn't cost him just before halftime. Winston hasn't thrown a pick yet. After a quiet first half for both guys, as far as stats and numbers, start to see why they're so unique and special to their teams. No doubt. Here's an incompletion and gunned it near side for Rudolph, but it'll be third and five. One of the rare miscommunications between Winston and the receiver today. He's frustrated with his receiver, Rudolph, because he wanted him to kind of run a banana route. Instead of saying parallel, he wanted him to come up towards the line of scrimmage, and, and, and he stays out here. He wanted him to come there. He threw it more where he would be running downhill, and the young freshman instead ran it. He was a little too parallel to the line of scrimmage. They converted third and 21 on the last touchdown drive. They need just five, but this is an important play. Ducks show pressure, then back off into coverage, but it's Cook underneath, losing the ball. Caught it and fumbled it. Reggie Daniels for the Ducks. A second turnover and a second fumble by the true freshman on this big stage. Ouch. We saw, we saw the senior Derek Malone earlier go after the true freshman and knock the ball loose, and this time it's Eric Dargan. The Knowles have a first down. Well executed play, but again, it's from behind. The senior Dargan rips that ball loose, and when it goes down, there's nothing but green jerseys all over it to pick up another turnover by Florida State. That so, ball never seemed to be securely in the arms or hands of the young running back. Here's the leadership of Jameis Winston. A lot of football left. We cannot afford to have him 
lose his head if I'm Jameis Winston. He's lost the ball twice, though. We'll have to see if they go with Williams from here on out. Now, can Mario to make him pay? Play action. They fire it near side. This is Nelson. He gets a block. Charles Nelson dancing down inside the 30. It's first down. Yeah, if you think they've gone tempo before, th this team senses when they have a defense and a team. It's kind of that blood in the water kind of feel. That's where Oregon is right now with a nice lead by 12 points. They get a turnover. Now you're going to see tempo. Thank it to Freeman. Pump fake. Running free. and now 30 yards, Kirk. They baited them, they baited them, and then they attacked. Got exactly what they wanted in this Florida State defense that's been reeling. They got lulled to sleep, and that's where Marcus Mariota makes his big plays. Snyder makes it a 19-point lead. You got a receiver right here at the bottom. Now watch the Florida State defense. You see how they attacked? The, uh, they think they're thinking about that short, quick throw. They bit up on that pump fake. They do it so many times in this offense. Carrington acting like he's blocking, then goes downfield, makes the throw. Set up once again, Chris, by the turnover by the freshman. Yeah, both of the fumbles have been cashed in for touchdowns. Winston and Oles are really up against it now. Down 19 to a team on a roll. They have another escape left in them. Let's get Southern California. Nice view from DirecTV's aerial coverage. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Knowles got to get a touchdown here to answer. It's not, with all due respect to some of the teams in the ACC, it's not NC State, it's not anybody else. It's no. Oregon that you're down big against. And, and what's what's unique about this is it's one thing that for Jameis Winston and the Knowles and Jimbo Fisher maybe to get on track and score, but you're down 19 points now. Are you telling me all of a sudden you're going to stop Marcus Mariota? Wilson trying to provide a spark with the return, but he's knocked down short of the 25-yard line. This 29-game winning streak has been stretched by consistently showing heart and resolve and making clutch plays you see the deficit and what they eventually won by the last four games Kirk decided by a total of 14 points but this is a hole that's far more imposing than anything they've faced in that streak yeah they, they've not faced this kind of offense that they're trying to catch up to Georgia Tech that night in Charlotte had a great game of executing but they don't have the firepower with Marcus Mariota and the speed that he has around him they've got 19 minutes and 16 seconds to keep the back-to-back -back title dreams alive. Winston, short completion over the middle. The Ducks will give him that. And what I was going to say is what they've done all game is they, they've dropped their corners and safeties. They are deep. They're not giving away any throws. It's been the plan from the very first play for the Ducks defense. Don't give up any explosive plays over the top. Build that umbrella. Keep everything in front, which is going to make it hard for Jameis Winston because he's not going to more than likely get an explosive play. Everything has to be underneath. In second and five, you saw Cook on the sidelines as they go to the senior Williams spelling him after the two fumbles, and it's another third down play coming up. So that, the, the linebackers and the safeties just really in great position. The offensive line trying to work to that second level, but they can't get off of those, those three down linemen. They're eating up blocks and freeing up the middle linebackers and the safeties to make plays against the run. They're making a strong statement to people from around the country who have called this team soft and finesse. I don't think it's just this team. I think it's the Oregon program that they use some of those, those words and terms for. Label doesn't fit, folks. <laughs> And now they'll have to spend a timeout, which could be costly in a potential comeback here. Third and four play, obviously important to convert it, but Fisher was a little bit frustrated to have to spend a timeout. And Kirk, you've talked about just the difficulty 
of defending this Oregon offense with the skill set of Mariota, the deception, and the tempo all working together. It's gotten the better of the Noles here in the second half. The, the, and you knew coming in it was going to be a big factor. I, I call it the equalizer for Oregon. You have a quarterback that's, that's played now 40 games. He has a skill set that's as good as any quarterback that's ever run this scheme, and he knows every defense you can throw at him, so he makes adjustments along with the tempo. And then the other thing is they lull you to sleep. They run the middle, they run outside, they throw the quick throw to the outside in the perimeter, they throw it enough that you just saw in the last touchdown. They fake it, guys are out of position, another guy sneaks downfield, and they throw for touchdown passes. They have done it for six years now. Very, very few teams have done a good job of being able to slow them down. In fact, the only team really has done a good job, they just either had dominating defensive linemen, like LSU or maybe a, a, an Auburn, or teams within their conference that get a little bit more familiar with their tempo. When important third and four off the timeout. Winston has time, delivers again across the middle. First down catch, Williams running across the 45. The tailbacks have been an important weapon out of the backfield with Green and O'Leary relatively quiet today. We've got an injury there, another duck down. But th this is another play we saw last time in the last possession. Cook make a play where he fumbled it. He came out of the, on the right to come out, on, uh, out of the backfield on the right side. This time we have Carlos Williams coming out to the left. So look at the eyes of Jameis Winston. Waits to the last possible second and then makes that throw. And as we said, they're taking away the deep throws. So you've got to make the throw underneath and hope that either a receiver or running back can find a crease or a seam and then accelerate upfield. It was Dargan who was down again. He's out. Robinson replaces him. It's a first down run and breaking free. Williams, the senior, is spinning to the 35-yard line. It's a much better job by the offensive line. They win the battle up front. You can see there's nobody in the middle. They are spread out with the formation of Florida State with all the wide receivers all over the field. And Carlos Williams, it looked like initially at the at the handoff there, looked like he might have lost control of the ball. That wasn't the best execution there between the quarterback and the running back. You fake it to Williams. Winston fires low and incomplete. Cook with those two fumbles on the sidelines now. He's got 103 yards. Carlos Williams trying to make it a, a second tailback in the 100-yard club today. Knowles not only facing Oregon, but obviously also their enemy right now, the clock. Yep. That's the downside of, of running the ball and methodically moving it downfield. Oregon more than willing to give up yards and keep the clock moving. They just want to keep everything in front of them and rally to the ball. Rudolph on the edge, gets a block, gets free, and is knocked out of bounds at the 30, five-yard game. Impressed by these corners. I really had my doubts, my questions about how would they hold out without their four-year starter, Ifo Akre Olamu, their leader, injured in bowl preparation. And Troy Hill and Chris Cissé up to this point have held their own. They've done more than hold their own. There's another third down. They need five. Winston, pressure, delivers. Incomplete, was a little bit behind Travis Rudolph. Troy Hill was defending, and now it's fourth down. Well, he had him wide open. I was surprised he didn't release it. I, his eyes must have been looking to another area. In fact, I think he was looking off to his left. But for a while there, Travis Rudolph clear in the middle, just open, just waiting for the football. By the time Jameis Winston saw him, it was too late. They couldn't get the fourth down earlier, and they still don't have a fourth down conversion all season long. They need five yards here to really maintain contact in this football game. Play clock winding down. Does Jameis see it? No, the sideline did. And a second timeout burned on this drive, Kurt. Jimbo Fisher probably telling Jameis Winston to come over here. He wants to talk to him, saying, you got to go hurry up. Going too slow. He's talking to all the center, Cam Irving. That hurts to he says, twice. we got to go. we got to go. Of course. <laughs> twice on this possession, they've had to, to yep. burn timeouts. And those this, are, is a, those this is a huge play here. It's a crucial play, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but those are timeouts that when you're down by 19 with a minute 53 to go into third, you can't afford to lose those timeouts. I totally agree, but they need to try to get the five yards. Got to get it. Yeah. What does he draw up there? Well, 
I think depending on the coverage that he gets. You think he, O'Leary a lot of times the, in this situation, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, but we have not seen a lot of that tonight. We've seen the back sneaking out of the backfield, whether it's been Cook or Williams. He did some kind of crossing round underneath. Now you gotta watch the nose guard. Balducci has been dropping in coverage. And Oregon does that, they'll show it's like a zone blitz where they'll show pressure from the outside and drop a defensive lineman on these quick underneath throws. But over the over this entire year, they've had a lot of success throwing quick slants and underneath throws to Rashad Green. No one's got to get five. Ducks rush only three. Once it has all day, tries to escape, circles back, still alive. Loses the football, ball comes out. It's scooped up by the Ducks. And Tony Washington streaking to the end zone. Is that the Ducks' down? You know, in some ways, with the year that Winston and Florida State, the year that they've enjoyed and coming back so many different times, it almost took something as bizarre as that play to maybe do them in and finish them off this year. He circled. He stayed alive forever. Stumbled. Yeah. Finally just dropped the ball. And Tony Washington... Most experienced guy in that defense and his 29th start adds to what's been a terrific game for him. And Schneider has the extra point blocked. There's a scrum there. And they'll blow it dead. The lead stays at 25. All right. This was again great coverage by Oregon. They took away all of his reads early. He's trying to keep this play alive. And as he starts to do, as he starts to scramble around, Carlos Williams was there to break free. But it's very tough to see him. And how about Tony Washington? He's the one, he left Carlos Williams in coverage to get pressure. And when he did, Jameis Winston just trying to keep the play alive, just fighting and struggling to try to make something happen. That's the third fumble recovery of the season for Washington. He made a big sack to clinch a win over Washington State. He's been a, a clutch player. Mariota says, we're up by 25. Jameis falls into a deeper hole. One that can only seem unlikely to escape. Nothing's impossible with this team. They've not been up against it like this. Say you, are you going to the bench if you don't call it? Trying to lip read is tricky. I got, I got a lot of lip reading there. I'll just tell yeah. you later when we get to the break. I think I recognize a few of those words. <laughs> yeah. I think he says, I'll yeah. tell you, you might go to the bench. He might yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. I think he said, calm down. And... It's a third yeah. quarter. Say fumble in the third quarter. Competitive fire from the head coach and the quarterback. We don't need to make any more out of that. No. Yeah. It happens a lot. Yeah. It's frustration. They're not used to being in, in this position. Not this far behind. No. No, no. Not against the team this good. Whitfield. And he produced some magic. Flag comes down as Whitfield. Still sports free in Oregon territory, but there was a flag, a couple of them on the field very early in the return. Yeah, a couple, I wouldn't even call them holds, a couple tackles there by Florida State. This will come back. Desperate to try to get Whitfield loose here, as he got loose a year ago and gave the Knowles their first lead of the game against Auburn. Hasn't really been a return weapon this year, Whitfield. Hasn't been a strength for this team. As the conversation continues. There are two fouls on the play. Holding, receiving team number 18. That penalty's declined. Holding, receiving team number 20. That foul will be enforced. 10 yards, first down. In 16 minutes and 26 seconds, down 25. So you need at least four touchdowns if you can keep Oregon out of the hit zone. Right. right. I mean, that's, that's interesting you think about it. 
First thing you got to do is get a first down, right? <laughs> it's a long way to go. They can't really afford to be methodical now. No. They work the middle of the field again. And knocked down is Rudolph after a game across the 35. Again, Oregon, they have been doing it and doing it well. They're, you know, this is not a game where you're concerned about stats. Well, we're going to give up some yards. We're going to give up the plays over the middle of the field. You can see that. Give away, give, prevent the big play. As I've been saying all night, rally to the ball and keep that clock moving if you're Oregon. Winston. Ball came out lovely, picked off. It was out of the hands of Travis Rudolph. Another turnover. Was his arm hit as he threw? Oh, the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage by DeForest Buckner, 6'7", 290. And we knew with Buckner and Armstead, one 6'7", and the other 6'8", that they had a chance to knock these footballs down. And you'll see it off to the left. 44 old number 70. He gets his hand on the ball right there, deflects it. Made it tougher for Rudolph to hold on to the ball, but then it goes out of his hands. And there is Dargan again. He's made a lot of big plays tonight for the Ducks defense. Had a strip that eventually led to a fumble and a touchdown for Oregon. This time off the tip ball from his teammate Buckner through the hands of the receiver Rudolph and into his hands. For the and now the Ducks are off and running again. It's Freeman around the edge in the final minute of the third quarter. Trying to make it an even bigger deficit for Florida State. That's the thing with Oregon. It's not, it's not as if they think, okay, we're up 25. You've turned the ball over a bunch here. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to slow up. We're going we're gonna to ease up. If anything, they're going to go faster right now. Freeman spinning away. It's a first down at the 31. Don't have to snap it again in the third quarter, but they might. They might. <laughs> They've got just enough from this running game tonight. 149 yards, 157 yards on the ground through three quarters to complement what they like to do in this offense. And there's Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach who has worked so many hours and spent so much time with Jameis Winston, just trying to calm him down, trying to just you know, put the floor up, just try to keep competing, keep your composure. You know, the four fingers refers to the fourth quarter, but it could refer also to four turnovers for Florida State, which have been huge. Cashed in by the Ducks for 21 points and the potential for more. Oregon up by 25, 15 minutes away from the championship game in Texas. Deep, deep trouble for O'Leary and the reigning champions. Western Mutual, also the first ever college football playoff semifinal game, and the Ducks are in the driver's seat as we begin the final quarter. Dominant, dominant 27-point third quarter for Oregon. Four touchdowns, including one by the defense. And the first down play, Mariota rolls, flips it to the end zone, over the head of Marshall. Close to the line of scrimmage when he threw it. Yeah. Jameis Winston, while we were at the commercial, he's gathered his emotions with Randy Sanders, and now he's trying to convey that same message to the offensive line and the rest of this offense. Believe in yourself. Looking about a guy that hasn't lost a football game since 2011. Alabama State High School semifinals. Viger High School beat him. Bayless makes the catch. Down to Heather Cox. Guys, I was right behind the bench when Jameis got his entire offense together. Like you saw, he sat in the coach's chair and preached to his team, said, believe in ourselves. We are here for a reason. I love every single one of you. Keep believing. Then he stood up and went and shook every single player on his offense. Look at his defense getting the football back. Ducks need five on third down, and Freeman is stopped short. Reggie Northrup wrapped him up. It'll be fourth and about two yards, Kirk. You know, one of the few times we've seen Oregon slow down. Run, instead of running to the edge, to the perimeter, they, they run the big fella Freeman. Comes up a little bit short, but you can always remember with Mark Helfrich, even with this big lead, this is always four down territory. So 
Third down, they're just thinking about trying to get it to fourth and even more manageable. Excellent percentage all year long, converting on fourth down. We stopped earlier. Mariota keeps it for now. Cuts back, and Marcus Mariota, a green ball in the end zone. Plus one of the defending champs. Watch Casher. He's in position to make the play. He outruns Casher. Casher should at the very least made him pitch the ball. And then you've got a running back and a corner to be able to make the play. It was good execution. Florida State's men were there. Marcus Mariota's skill and speed ran right by his read. And instead of Casher making the play to make him deliver the football out, he just ran right by him. 23-yard touchdown, Kirk. Flag on the one after touchdown. Offside, defense 99, enter the neutral zone, causing the offense to fall start. A penalty's declined. We'll take the try. Watch Casher right there. Great position. Making pitch the ball. And if you have PJ Williams on the pitch back, Royce Freeman. But the speed, talking about an elite athlete in Marcus Mariota and Casher, 250 pounds out in space. He can't make that play. Eric. Maybe some other quarterbacks you can run this fast. Other quarterbacks you can throw accurately. No one can do both those things like this guy. Look at today's Capital One pivotal performance, and it's his Florida State offense. They've had the ball five times. Four third-quarter turnovers alone. Three fumbles and an interception. And Oregon able to capitalize and turn them into points. This Florida State offense, we've seen it time and time again be able to come back from holes that they have dug themselves in early in games. And now they've run up into a juggernaut in Marcus Mariota in this Oregon offense. 27 unanswered for the Ducks. As Wilson is knocked down across the 20. And Florida State, we were so used to seeing them excel after halftime, Kirk. They got points before the break, but they might get back into it. Hasn't happened. Yet. And, and a couple of these fumbles from the true freshman, Dalvin Cook. Oregon turning 27 points. Four turnovers into 27 points. The last two turnovers by Winston. Fumble taken to the house by Washington. And then the pick. Between not scoring touchdowns in the red zone early in the game and then all the turnovers in the third quarter, those are the two reasons Florida State finds themselves where they are. There's a handoff to Williams. The Ducks, besides being explosive, are also opportunistic. Uh, if they've broken, by the way, the Rose Bowl record, no one had ever scored more than 49 points in the Rose Bowl. Really allowed all season long 12 points after the rare turnovers. They got about a 10 to 1 ratio, converting more than 120 points Incredible. off opponents' takeaways. Incredible. I think, the stats it, in the game. I think the turnovers fit into their offensive attack mode. Mm -hmm. They get a turnover, change the momentum, boom. They, they turn up the accelerator. Over the middle, into traffic, catch made. First down across the 40-yard line, and it's green. Can't help but think, and you look over this stadium, about a turning point in their season for Oregon when they had lost on a Thursday night to Arizona at home. A lot of people thought, uh-oh, this Oregon team may be in trouble, even though it's Mariota's maybe his last year. And then a week later, they came into this stadium yep. to play UCLA and won decisively, and they have not looked back since, winning eight straight. That's a great point. The game was October 11th. They led 42 to 10 over the Bruins for a couple of late touchdowns. Winston, a lot of time, and the catch made. Wilson trying to break free, lost the ball again, and the Ducks have it. Another turnover, the fifth. The fifth in less than 18 minutes. Unbelievable. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. And it, it, it's, it's almost become contagious for Florida State. Bobo Wilson, who, who has come on this year as a sophomore, great protection. Wilson's there, and right away the ball gets a little bit away from his body. These Oregon defenders are coming in trying to knock that football loose. That's exactly what they did again. Well taught. Give Don Pelham, the defensive coordinator, a lot of credit. 
for having these ducks in attack mode. They don't give up on plays. They've given up some yards, but a lot of times they're knocking that ball loose after they give up the yards. Tyson Pullman will cover that, Kirk. Malone is in there again, forcing it. And now Tyner breaking free, and Thomas Tyner pinballing down near the 40-yard line. Ducks trying to really pour it on now. Yeah, the Florida State will is being challenged. In fact, it's, it's starting to crack. And when your will starts to crack, you start to become a poor tackler. Worst team in the world to play when your will is cracking in the no, defense. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're still in the same, they have the same mindset they had at the first snap of this game. They're not interested in 52 being a Rose Bowl record. They're just, they're executing. They're just executing. They're, Scott Frost calls down the plays. They get it out there and use their tempo, and they're trying to put more points on the board. Junior linebacker Reggie Northrup being helped off. 29th 50-point game since Helfrich became offensive coordinator under Kelly, who obviously called the plays when he was here. Helfrich underappreciated. You look at the other coaches in this Final Four playoff bracket. Saban. Urban Meyer, Jimbo Fisher, and this guy makes about a third of what these guys make so far. He, he's the most underpaid coach in America, says Jake Fisher, his left tackle. And you know who the happiest guy is? His agent. <laughs> he's about to He's about the to second happiest. Uh, Mark, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, he deserves it. He will get, they've said, a, he better. a raise. Pay these assistants, too. Pay them all. Got to do it. Market value, right? They pay the assistants. They've upgraded their pay. No look the play clock for once in the game. Only time they have been in a hurry all afternoon. Tyner. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you something. Thomas Tyner, not only tonight, but next week, it's going to be fun to watch with him running the football the way he is. This is great. Hey, Medford, Oregon. He went to Austria. A player coach for the Vienna Vikings. Helfrich said he wanted to go to medical school. All of a sudden, he gets into some coaching. You saw the brief in Colorado. Comes here, named the head coach, and a lot of folks outside of the Pac-12 said, "Who? Who's replacing Chip Kelly? Never heard of him." Yeah. And Rob Mullins beginning to hear him. He, he wanted to keep the continuity, so he stayed within. Uh, that staff, they have incredible continuity with assistants that have been there for over 20 years, and they don't want to go outside and, and bring somebody in to replace Chip. Obviously, it's worked out pretty well for him. Tyner. There's a first down and more. Well, where's the hat down near the 20? That's a great point, Kirk. Uh, the consistency on this staff. you got three assistants that have been in Eugene more than, than two decades. And I think that's what helped with the transition. In fact, there wasn't a huge transition other than Chip Kelly ran the offense. You know, of course, during the week, he took a lot of information from, from Mark and other assistants on the offensive side. But he, he was in command of this team on the offensive side when he was calling the plays. And to take him out... I think a lot of people wondered who would have that presence, who would who would take over. And Mark's doing it in his own way. Yep. And Scott Frost deserves a ton of credit for calling the plays. You imagine replacing Chip Kelly in this offense, calling the plays. Got a heck of a job. Big shoes to fill and Tyner cuts loose. Thomas Tyner to the end zone for a second time. I'll tell you something. Florida State's quick. I don't know if I've ever said who would ever say that. But Florida State has quit. They have shut down the operation here in the semifinal. Early in the fourth quarter. Tyner reaching that very same end zone here in the Rose Bowl where the late game heroics won him a championship a year ago. And they've lived dangerously throughout this 29 game streak, especially this season. Seven narrow escapes. But you're exactly right. The streak will die with a resounding, resounding defeat at the hands of the Oregon Ducks, who are closing in on the championship game up by 39. Garnet and gold section of the Rose Bowl. Empty seats beginning to appear. The fan base so used to winning. They've done nothing but that the last 29 games, but rocks down 39. Whitfield. Breaks free. And now shut down. 
at the 40. So the Ducks will head down to Arlington, Texas to take on the winner of semifinal number two, Amari Cooper and the Crimson Tide in New Orleans against the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Kurt? Yeah, big part of Ohio State's defense will be trying to contain Amari Cooper. I think you'll see them jam him at the line of scrimmage with safety help behind just to try to take him away and force Alabama and Blake Sims to go to other receivers and other ways to, to try to move the ball, put points on the board. He has been obviously the weapon in that Alabama offense. Mario Pender is the tailback behind Winston for the first time tonight. Will Fisher just run the ball and, and get out of here before further damage is created. Yeah, this is a, an unlikelihood the final college game for Jameis Winston. A chance perhaps for it to be been able to get two more wins to have the most remarkable two-year career for any quarterback. As it is, his legacy is is excellent. Yeah, I don't see what happens here. Well, I'll talk about it more after this play. Winston fires a miscommunication. O'Leary was held up. It'll be third and long. For me, I, I know there have been a lot of distractions and a, a lot of things off the field. He's trying to keep Nick O'Leary in this game. He wants him to keep keep playing hard. But I, I just, I always remember and respect his competitive spirit and how he rubbed off on his team. When this team faced adversity, they felt like they could always come back with number five as their leader, with number five out there. And that, that, that's a powerful thing to have when your entire team not just the offense but the defense leads off of belief in who you are and that's what I'll remember about it Winston delivers high incomplete another pass off the hands of a Knowles receiver that was Travis Rudolph it's amazing to see this team and and to see the mistakes they've made here in the third quarter and now continuing on in the fourth fumbles uh, drop balls, balls that have been through receivers' hands that have come up, gone into the air for interceptions. Just this sequence here, these plays, plays that they've been making routinely for most of the year, just, just, just not meant to be tonight. Team that came in with supreme confidence and scored before the half, got the ball to begin this third quarter, had to be filled with confidence and belief for success in so many situations, and then the fumbles began and and belief began to bleed away this is an 18 to 13 game yeah. at halftime 18 to 13 and they had the ball to start the second half back to the conclusion of the rose bowl game presented by northwestern mutual after this and field goal nets all state makes contributions to participating universities General scholarship funds for each field goal and PAT. Since 05, All State has kicked in more than $3.8 million in scholarship funds. Marcus Mariota, no curtain call, but he'll sit out the rest of this game, replaced by Jeff Lockie. Marcus pouring forth those emotions, the pride of being the first Hawaiian to win the Heisman Trophy, Kurt. As they hand the ball off to Kenny Bassett. Went home to Hawaii. Pretty exhausted. It rained, didn't get to the beach as much as he hoped. Stayed inside because everyone in Hawaii wanted a piece of his time and to shake his hand and congratulate him. Absolutely. Like this man right here. <laughs> exactly. It's not a bad. It's not, you don't see that every day. Check Phil out. Thanks in the speech of the Heisman. Phil Knight, yeah. CEO of Nike, just hanging out over there. It's not a bad deal. And of course, Phil and Penny Knight, benefactors of this Oregon athletic program in a huge way. Winston. Trying to compose himself. We knew that one quarterback's college career was going to almost certainly end on this field. And one's extend to an even bigger game. President Obama, like Mariota, a native-born Hawaiian, had this to say. As good a young man as he is an athlete. Fun to watch all of Hawaii. Root for his success. As St. Louis, Marcus High School was the president's Alma mater's rival at Puna House of Powerhouse in Honolulu as well. Said I let that slide. Yeah, let's let's slide. That's great. <laughs> I, I've, I've had the good fortune of covering the Hula Bowl and been to Hawaii a number of times, and I know how proud the folks over there are of, of Marcus. Like they are, all the players that come from the islands and, and play college football, and especially when you win the grand prize. Lucky, trying to convert, and it is. Bassett breaking free, a little used 
13 tailback for the Ducks, even able to run through this Knowles defense. Defense. I, I tell you, the tackling. It, it's but one thing to deal, to struggle to deal with the tempo. It's another thing just not to tackle. Starters are still out there for Florida State. But not playing like them. Not at all. Mariota was talking about these four days of rest in Hawaii and how excited the postman was when he brought this big, heavy package to the Mariota household, thinking maybe, maybe this might be the Heisman I'm delivering. Pass it again. It was not. It was one of the other trophies that Marcus has won, but he better have a, a big trophy case. Super Mariota living up to his nickname, Kirk. 26 of 36 today. 338. Two touchdowns. A lot of coins. <laughs> a lot of coins and a big coin waiting for him in Arlington next week. That would be the eighth world, I believe, next week if you clear Arlington. Who's playing the role of Luigi in this, in this <laughs> drama? That's right. We don't know. There's a fumble on the exchange, and that's a turnover for Oregon as Eric Natty recovers it. A smile from Bassett who coughed it up. So with 6.28 to go, Knowles get the football back. But this one's still firmly in Oregon's grasp, even if that football wasn't. Well, the Knowles won the last of their three crystal balls here a year ago. This is the brand new national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Fought for in Arlington, Texas, 11 nights from now. We'll be down there at AT&T Stadium, Oregon, awaiting the winner of semifinal number two, Alabama and Ohio State. As the Knowles take over following the fumble, Kirk, want to get your, your take on that football game, Cardell Jones, second start. You see Winston on the sidelines. Apparently, his evening ended in, in all likelihood his college career. The decision day is January 15th. But now with this loss, he'll begin to immediately plot and plan. And one would presume that he'll enter the draft. He's a redshirt sophomore. Sean McGuire, who filled in for Winston and helped his team beat Clemson in that overtime game, is in the position now. Yeah, he, he, really, that was his main opportunity. You know, he's only had two pass attempts since that Clemson game. Led him to a victory when he looked that night like they might not be able to get through that one without Jameis Winston. But came up with a big pass late in that game and kept their dream alive. Third down play. And McGuire skips it, so it'll be fourth down. You're talking about that next game yeah. uh, about Cardell Jones, and I think that's the big mystery in the next game is you have Nick Saban and Kirby Smart who have quite a reputation of getting a defense ready with a three-week or four-week layoff, getting ready for bowl games. And then you have a, a quarterback that played great in the Big Ten Championship game, but there isn't a whole lot of experience other than that. And you have the matchup up front with the Ohio State offensive line and Ezekiel Elliott against that Bama D-line. It's going to be a great matchup. Beatty punts it down, and Johnny Lloyd, the former Oregon basketball point guard, makes the fair catch. To put in perspective, this 29-game winning streak for Florida State, which is certainly one of the best in the modern era. Go back the last 50 years. It's Miami Street, 2000-2001, which includes a championship that they won on this field in a route over Nebraska. A tremendously talented team that many Oregon fans had hoped they would face in this setting. UCS formula gave the edge to Nebraska. USC with that 34-game streak. Knowles so dominant a year ago. Tested really only here in the championship game. Tested so frequently this season. Able to pass every test until this one. And I've been one now, the fourth tailback. Down after a short game. Yeah, for me with Florida State at this point, it's it's games out of reach. Now you're gonna when you look at film, you're gonna find out for next year. 
who your warriors are. You, know, you want to find out guys who finish it to the end. See, you know, obviously disappointed. 29 game win streak, chasing another national championship. These things are out, out of the window at this point. But you don't want to give up. You know, we've seen some signs of that here in this second half. And I think if I'm Jimbo Fisher and Charles Kelly, I, I want to see who my foxhole guys are for next year. Breaking free. Ben Wine. Out near midfield, and every duck running back who touches the ball is having success now. And they're, they're just running the football, and then, you know, they're trying to work a little bit of clock, but you're going up against this Knowles defense that's, uh, it's, again, emotionally spent. You know, they have, they have been on their heels most of this game against the tempo and against the different looks, and when, when you start to lose your edge defensively, you start to, to either have poor tackling or poor fits as far as being physical with your fits. And we've seen quite a bit of that here in the second half against against Oregon's offense from Florida State. It's another Rose Bowl record for the Ducks, Kirk. They already have 10 more points than any team that ever scored before. And now the record for yards, 641 after that one-yard gain. Yeah, their fans want another touchdown. They're, they're cheering. They want an, another touchdown. They want to get over 60 points. Incredible to think who woke up today on a, a new year thinking that Oregon's going to score potentially over 60 points playing Florida State. Seven by the defense. They've cashed in takeaways for touchdowns. Who thought that Florida State would only score 20 against this Oregon defense? Yeah. Benoit again. Stopped in midfield. I just, I just continue to go back to think, you know, you're kind of reliving this game a little bit. I, Florida State scores a touchdown at the end of the first half, and they get the ball to start the second half. Momentum on their side. It's 18 to 13 for a team that's been really prided itself on coming back in second half this year, and everything just got away from them in a blink of an eye with all the turnovers. And the way Oregon capitalized on those four turnovers and into 27 points in the third quarter. We saw Rashad Green, one of the great receiving careers ever at Florida State. And career will end here tonight. Yeah, the Ducks scored that first possession they had in the third quarter. Then the Cook turnover. Then that avalanche began. And they, they couldn't reverse it. Yeah, and whoever plays them next week, it's, it's not just dealing with Mariota and the tempo and all that. It, and they've had this since Chip Kelly was there as the head coach. It, it happens fast. It is like an avalanche. You're, you're hanging around, you're hanging around, and the margin of error is so slight. In the blink of an eye, it's touchdown, touchdown, turnover, touchdown. And you look up, Michigan State, they went through that this year when they went out to Eugene. They hung around for two and a half quarters. Midway through the third quarter, Oregon scored like 28 unanswered. Boom, just like that. Look up at the scoreboard, and there's a blowout. Oh, yep. It was a 21-zip run to end the game against yep. Stanford as yep. well. Yeah. So whoever plays them next week, you better avoid those those runs of momentum that Oregon can get on. Quarterback comparison here. Winston threw the ball pretty effectively. 348 did have the one interception, stumbled and, and lost that fumble that Washington returned for a touchdown. Numbers are a little bit misleading. I, I don't think it was really a contest when you look at the, the totality. Marcus Mariota has been in command. He had the one throw that sailed on him that was a surprise before the half. Florida State wasn't able to capitalize on that interception, but boy, he has just been... It's like the game's moving in slow motion for him. He's moving at warp speed, the snap of the ball every 12 seconds, and the defense is its literally like they're in slow motion. Forty-one points is a half as a Rose Bowl record. We talked about the 59 and the 641 total yards. If it is a, a matchup in Arlington against Alabama, it'll be the first ever meeting between the two schools. Ducks are 0-8 against Ohio State. If they face the Buckeyes lost here in the Rose Bowl about five years ago. Yeah. I love that shot of him over there just being one of the guys. That's that's his sanctuary. 
not so much answering questions at the post-game presser today, but right there being one of the guys. He's not the guy, even though it's all of us on the outside, he's the guy. He's one of the guys, and that's that's a really neat thing about Marcus Mariota, and it's why his teammates genuinely love this man as their leader. He's grown as a leader, too. They ask him to be more vocal and more engaging, and he certainly has been. It's a different leadership style. You don't always see it in front of the cameras. You get the buckets warmed yeah. up here for Helfrich. Chris, uncharted waters for all of us, right? They're going to load up the water, but uncharted waters here with this celebration. Usually we're here at this stadium, and it's the culmination to a season. We got a game in, what, 11 or 12 yep. days. Oregon does. So there'll be a celebration here, but there's more work to be done for Mark Helfrich and for the Oregon team. So it, it's a different feel. It, it, it feels different. I totally agree. It's, it's historic, and then part of it is that it won't quite feel the same winning this game, where you can walk out and, and savor it and begin to think about the offseason. You begin to think about the Crimson Tide of the Buckeyes. Yeah, yeah. Alabama favored for a reason over Ohio State. Experts made Oregon a favorite here, and that raised some eyebrows, but this was a resounding statement by the entire Ducks organization. A 39-point victory. They'll get the T-shirts, they'll be the confetti, and they'll get that trophy. We still have the water down there? They're going to throw the water? Oh, they, they're empty. Here. Maybe, maybe this isn't. You gotta save the water potentially for the for the next one. Victory formation. 34 unanswered points to turn a close game into a beatdown. And the Seminoles head for the locker room. Not many of them heading to midfield to shake hands. Glad to see Jameis Winston as a leader of this team stuck stuck it out over over half the Florida State team right into the locker room didn't come across Jimbo Fisher shakes hands disappointing to you that's disappointing that 70 percent of the Florida State teams in the locker room it's easy to go across when you win a game to shake hands you lose a game after 29 games and you can't come over and shake a hand of an Oregon player and tell him congratulations Rashad Green's doing it Certainly That's Winston true. and Mariota in exchange. They'll, they'll see each other on Sundays to follow, no doubt. And Tom Rinaldi's on the field with Mark Elfrich. Chris, thank you very much. Before the game, the question was, how do you beat a team that hasn't lost in 29 straight? Now the question is, how did you beat them this decisively? <laughs> well, we just tried to out-team them, you know, and I think our defense yeah, just, just played very, very well in the second half, creating a bunch of turnovers. Our special teams, we knew we were in for an absolute dogfight with their return game, and, and offensively tried to do enough to, to, to make a difference. But extremely proud of our guys and our coaches. Great, again, great representation from our fans. And now, now we got one more. What did you prove? I don't know. That's up to you. You guys are all the geniuses in the media, but we believe a ton in, 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 in our deal, and we believe a ton in who we are, and we've got a great team, great, great team of guys. You were facing a team that had come back nine times this season. What was the key to such a dominant third quarter? Uh, just just playing, you know, we're talking about a halftime, of just playing a little bit cleaner in, 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 a, in every phase and finishing. And, and we absolutely knew we were going to get a dogfight. And, and that is an act, you know, excellent team, an outstanding team. A ton of credit to those guys. It's unfortunate, you know, it goes from four to two, and, and it's all of a sudden their season's a failure. That is a great team, very well coached. It's uncharted territory. Now you have another game. How long do you enjoy this? <laughs> a few hours. We, we need to enjoy it because, again, those guys haven't been beaten in a long time, and it's tough. It's tough to, to do what our guys have done, but we, we've, we've got a plan. We've got a plan. Congratulations, Coach. We appreciate the time. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Let's go to Heather. Tom, thanks so much. Joined by Marcus Mariota. Congratulations. You came in tonight as a Heisman winner. You leave leading your team to a national championship. How would you describe this moment? It's incredible. Uh, I'm so proud of these guys in here and uh, for us to, to prepare all week and, and for it to, to, to show. I mean, you know, I'm just proud of these guys and, you know, we got one more to take care of. You guys use tempo as a weapon, but how were you able to do it so well in the third and fourth quarters? It just starts with practice. Um, you know, every single day we practice like that. And uh, these guys were in shape um, and, you know, for us, we just wanted to use it as a weapon.
You had one loss early. You guys haven't looked back since then. What did you learn in that one that helped you tonight? I think any any type of adversity uh, makes a team stronger. It brings everybody together. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of these guys. Once once that loss happened, the mindset didn't change. And, um, you know, now we're headed to the national championship. Marcus, this wasn't just a win. What kind of statement did the Oregon Ducks make tonight? I mean, that's up to you guys. You know, all we want to do is come in and win and, and um, you know, get ready for hopefully playing in the national championship. So much talk that this was just the third meeting of Heisman winning quarterbacks. You had a, a moment to talk to Jameis briefly after the game. What was that conversation like? I just told him good game uh, to keep his head up. And, I mean, he's, he's a great play. He's going to make plays. Um, but, you know, I'm part of the defense and the way they played, and, and we came out on top today. Congratulations. We'll see you at the national championship. Nice way to ring in the new year, Marcus. Chris, back to you. No one's ever had to tell Jameis Winston, keep your head up after a loss in college. His, in all likelihood, final college game is his first loss as a starting quarterback. Back at the scene where he heroically led the Knowles to a championship a year ago, he certainly could envision nothing like this. And quarterback echoing the words of his coach, a little salt from Mark Alford saying, you geniuses in the media can figure out what statement we made. It, it took no genius to see how they got this victory done. Can, can I help him? I'm not a genius, but I, I, I observe a lot of college football. And can we put to bed, America, that Oregon is a soft team? Can we? Can we put to bed that they can't play in games like this? They got on a big stage and they dominated a football game, not just with Marcus Mariota. They dominated in every way up front. They were physical. Their defense was questioned how they would match up against this speed from Florida State. They answered the bell. So to me, we can close the chapter or the discussion or the conspiracy theories out there that this team can't play in these kind of games. They are enjoying the moment, no doubt, but a bigger game awaits in Arlington, Texas against the winner of semifinal number two, Alabama and Ohio State. The Ducks came close to a championship once, lost by three to Auburn, but this is the first ever win over a top two team. For our team in Pasadena, so long. Now to the Orleans, the Crimson Tide, and the Buckeyes semifinal number two.